Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. There are seven mountains. Remember our series on the kingdom. There are seven mountains that I believe that God is raising and anointing the body of Christ to occupy, to take over, and to legislate on behalf of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mountain number one is the business and economic world. God wants men to conquer that mountain. Mountain number two, politics and governance. God is seeking for men who have an understanding of the spirit. Men after the order of Daniel who can legislate on behalf of territories and speak the counsel of God in our social environment. Mountain number three, family life. Family life is becoming a mess. Every arm robber was born by a woman, true or false. Every thief and tout that is threatening the society was born by a woman. So it's important that the life and the glory of God be taken to that, that area. Hallelujah. Mountain number four, education. Education. The value system of the kingdom must be taken. Education is so important because that is the principle of of sustainability when you educate people you mentor them you train them you build them it brings about continuity <clears throat> hallelujah what's mountain number five the arts and entertainment arts and entertainment very very important we have a lot of musicians we have a lot of footballers, movie actors, celebrities who can influence an entire territory just with one movie, one song, one rap, and so on and so forth. So we need to take God and his value systems there. Mountain number what now? Six, the media. Any man can buy airtime and say anything whether for or against God. We've had people speak against God directly. What's the last mountain? Huh? How can it be sports? Religion. The mountain of religion. We have several kinds of religions and all of their leaders and founders have a say and they have an influence over people. So we need to invade that mountain. Let's review the mountains very quickly again. Number one, business. We, we are tired of poor and broke churches, poor and broke Christians, poor and broke people. Hallelujah. We are tired of unbelievers controlling the wealth and the finances and allowing a few people to just crouch for resources. It's not of God. It's devilish. More sinners will go to hell as a result of poverty than lack of preachers. Hallelujah. Second mountain. 
Sorry? Politics and governance. Someone can sit down and legislate that land should not be sold for church building again. Is that true? No matter how anointed you are, you will suffer from that legislation. Recently, the gay movement was tested a bit in our Senate. I thank God because there is a level of decorum we have. Hallelujah. Our National Assembly has not derailed from the value of the kingdom that much. And so they just kicked it out at once. There are countries today that they have passed certain bills into law and they did not call any preacher or pastoral association for their consultation. So two people can decide to get married. Listen carefully. A man and a man. And they can choose the church they want to join them. And as a pastor, if you don't join them, they will withdraw your license. Sue you, lock up your church, pack up everything. Hallelujah. This is very disastrous. So we need men who have the fear of God. Men who understand the values of the kingdom to invade our government. Hallelujah. The Ten Commandments is not kicked out by herbalists. It's kicked out by parliament people. People who sit down and legislate on behalf of the kingdom. We can keep praying in tongues and throwing ourselves up and down. But so long as there are people who are legislating things that are not consistent with the will of God. It's terrible. In China, you cannot have more than a child now. One is okay. Praise God. It's terrible. They carry out free abortions before they pay women's salary. If by any reason, whether knowingly or knowingly, your husband gets you pregnant, you are in for it. What did I say? Whether knowingly or knowingly. That is none of their business. You have one child, that's enough. Because they are trying to control whatever they want to control. It's terrible. So we need people there. Number three. Family life. How many of you agree with me that family life is in a mess right now? It needs a reordering. Hallelujah. The boundaries that have been kept have been taken away. We do not even know where the boundaries are again. And this is why this series is important. But let's just review the other mountains. You can get all of this in our teachings on the kingdom. The fourth mountain. Education. Very important. For as long as we keep teaching people. You know, I told you one of our dreams is by the time God gives us an opportunity, we are going to build a school, a world-class school. I've shared it with the leaders. We will build a school and there are three courses we are going to add to the curriculum. One is called Spiritual Growth, Financial Education, and Koinonia. These are three courses that our students must offer. Hallelujah. For you to write Yeg, they say you must pass mass and English. For us, you must pass mass, English, financial education, and spiritual growth. Yeah. We keep raising intellectuals who have no fear and no knowledge of God. And their knowledge makes them fools. The Bible says there were two trees in the garden. One, the tree of life. The other, the tree that brings the knowledge of both good and evil. Hallelujah. The fifth mountain. Arts and entertainment, very important. Hallelujah. Some of you are gifted and skilled fashion designers, beauticians, and so on and so forth. We need people to carry the value system. We don't want the world teaching us how to dress, coming with every kind of junk and everything. We don't want the world controlling us. Let the best footballers be tongue-talking Christians. Let the best golfers be tongue-talking Christians. Who can say no to every Jezebel that wants to come and throw down their destiny? Hallelujah. We need to take the value system of the kingdom. Mountain number six. The media. I look forward to times when we will not just own. See, I truly believe that during our time, owning a television station will be like owning a handset. Hallelujah. We are talking about satellites. We are not talking about television stations. Hallelujah. Owning set lights and we pay for the bill for decades ahead of time. We can do anything we want to do. Nobody comes to tell us what to put on air. 
or what to take out of air, how to culture and edit our words. When you're listening to Christian programs and someone says a vulgar word, they have ways of canceling it. There are other programs that when you are mentioning the things of God, they cancel it the same way. That is nonsense. You can't stand begging the government for permission and airtime and they give us five minutes and ten minutes. If you want to worship for the whole day, let's have it. Thank God for the ministries that have television stations. It's a breath of fresh air in this wild jungle of Babylon where everything can just be posted online. Hallelujah. Then the last mountain is the mountain of religion. Religion has caused more harm to the body. It's all kinds of things. We need men who will rise up. This is where you talk about the fivefold authentic Christianity. And I'm glad to announce to you that Nigeria will present the true portrait of apostolic Christianity to the world. Yeah, this is true. Hallelujah. The mantle left UK in the days of Smith Wigglesworth and went down to America and they merchandised it by their intercourse with Babylon and it left to Asia and now it's returned to Africa. We will show the world the true portrait of what true apostolic Christianity is. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So today we are going to consider one of the mountains, family life. Pastor Jake started it. How many of you were blessed? Celebrate him. May God cause men to celebrate you just the way you did. Selfish people. Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'm just joking. You're not selfish people. You're spirit-filled champions and generals on your way to tear down the walls of evil. Hallelujah. So, now, please understand this. We are going to be very comprehensive in this series. We are not just talking about... For many people, when they just talk about um, relationship, the circumference of our dealing is just a guy, a lady, how they should get into a relationship and they stop there. Uh -uh. The journey starts from knowing yourself down till fatherhood, raising children, and that's why it's called family life. It's not called relationship series, right? Family life. So it's a journey. Praise the Lord. I want you to listen because the Lord told me he will answer a lot of questions tonight. And I know a few people, I hope they are here. I told them to be here. Who sent me a lot of questions, you know, about several confusions that they've had along this area. And I told them, look, just come for the program. God bless you. Pastor Jake started by talking about a godly relationship. And... We want to bring believers into an understanding of the biblical principles that govern godly relationships and family life. Everybody say after me, I'm a Christian. That means I'm a child of God. That means I'm not of the world. That means I have the value system of the kingdom. Yeah, that's true. You have the value system of the kingdom. You are not of the world. You cannot afford to do things the way people are just doing it and it's very sad please look up it's very sad over 90 percent of us in this place have learned everything we learned about relationship and family life either from media or our friends or our bitter experiences hallelujah there are few ministries that pay the price to talk about family life and the principles of godly relationships and you see what you don't teach people when you don't teach people certain principles they learn just anything that comes is that correct there are pastors that castigate and condemn people and get angry at their members because they don't seem to be excelling in this area but then they will not teach the truth the bible says faith comes by hearing when when adam said the Lord, the Bible says in, in Genesis 3, it says, and he had the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are thou? Adam said, I had your voice, but I hid. Why? Because I was naked. And God said, who told you? In other words, that's an information you got from somewhere. So everything you have today that constitutes your mindset was told you by somebody. The Bible says, Paul speaking, he says, there are, as it were, many voices in the earth. And none of them are without effect. So we're going to be considering 
a lot of things. This is a very life transforming series. And I want you to pay your rapt attention. Hallelujah. There are many people who were taught nothing about love, nothing about relationship, nothing about sex, nothing about marriage, nothing about the dignity of keeping yourself. They just, our parents just hoped that we will find the truth. Hallelujah. That has resulted to bitter casualty in the lives of many people. But tonight the Lord brings light in the name of Jesus. Very important. And the church that is supposed to be an apostolic molding place. The potter's house. Where men are built and fashioned. They've either shied away from it. And are not ready to take responsibility in that area. And teach and train the people. Because we have this demonic teaching. That these kinds of teaching should not be taught in church. We have this religious spirit. Is that true? There are churches that would dare not talk about things like this. They feel all that there is in the life of someone is just teach people how to be built spiritually. How to pray in tongues. How to love God. But those people who enter a relationship. Is that true? While they are praying, the guy sees the lady and likes her. Now he doesn't know how to manage what is happening to him. Or the guy wants to get married. And all he has been taught to do is pray in tongues and see visions in the realm of the spirit. And fall under the anointing. And he does not know how to help himself. There are many anointed children in the body of Christ. We are only sophisticated when it comes to spiritual things but when it comes to the wisdom of living in our social environment many christians are dull of understanding is that true many christians live like fools in their social environment because we lack the wisdom so you see an unbeliever who does not know god doesn't respect the ways of god but has a lot of wisdom when it comes to living in life wisdom for life Many church folks lack this. Hallelujah. That's why you can see, for instance, unbelieving ladies. You never see a guy who just gets up like that and comes to them. But every time you want to see nonsense that happens is Christian girls. Any man that feels is emotionally troubled and he just wants to sleep around with any lady, they know how to find Christian girls. Hallelujah. And that's not because the Christian girls are bad. That's because we the preachers who should build and help them and teach them the truth are being irresponsible. All of us. Let me tell you something. Never pray for a crowd or for membership if you cannot teach and train the people. Are you listening to me? You have no business having people in your congregation if you are not ready to build them. Praise the Lord. And by the grace of God, it's our goal to build people holistically. So sometimes you see us teach on character. And it looks as if that is all there is in God. Then we teach about the principles of the spirit and the anointing. We teach on finance. We teach on purpose, the kingdom, destiny. It's important to touch on every aspect. So that we will have believers that are built and fashioned. If you believe that, say amen. Right, so um, Pastor Jake started with the basics of relationship. Please, let's run through it. I have a lot to cover tonight and I trust God for grace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The first thing Pastor Jake started telling us, and everybody I want you to look up, inside and outside. Listen to me, lift your hands everybody. Say, I receive the spirit of meekness. Say one more time, I receive the spirit of meekness. I humble myself to hear to understand, to receive, and to learn. Pride is a, is a killer. There are many people who because of pride and arrogance would not listen. Many people will believe they know what they are doing. Just listen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The first thing we need to define is the concept of love. Pastor Jake said that very extensively. I will run through it. One of the biggest challenges please let me have one guy and one lady here quickly one here one here anybody taiwo quickly please appreciate them hallelujah 
Now, listen. I want you to know that a man is not another woman. Every lady say that a man is not another woman. Ladies say woman is not another man. Very important. The concept of love from the perspective of a man is far different from love. what love is for a woman. Are you following me now? The Bible says that when God brought man into being, all that was man's focus was purpose, destiny. Are you following me now? And honor and authority. Man was conscious of his place, the honor, the authority, and everything God has given him. And so very quickly, I want to go very straight to the point. Every time you talk of love from a man's perspective, it means two things. Number one, honor. Number two, respect. Everybody say, love for a man means, number one, number two. No matter how you claim or think you are loving a man, if that concept of love does not translate to genuine honor or respect, you have not loved the man by his definition. Are you following me now? Very important. Ladies, understand this. When it comes to dealing with a man, men can kill because of respect. Are you listening to me? Men can kill. You call somebody Mr. when you should call him chief. He can sue you. He can make sure you die for that statement. Is that true? Men can kill. You call somebody a pastor who you should call a reverend or a reverend who you should call a bishop or a brother who you should call an apostle or prophet or whatever. He can kill you for it. Sister, your beauty can fade at once like a leaf if you disrespect a brother. Are you listening to me? Oh, it's, it's not about ego. Ladies think it's ego. It's, it's our configuration by design. You will never get the best of a man if you do not understand what love means from the perspective of the man. So what does love mean, sisters? Honor and respect. What does it mean to honor? To hold in high esteem. To hold in high esteem. As we explore this, you will know the reason why some relationships will never work and some homes will never come together. It doesn't matter what kind of message is preached. It's not just about Satan and demons. Let's get the fundamental thing straight. So love means respect and honor. When you respect the guy, you respect his assignment, you respect his call, you respect his purpose. That's the circumference of what love means for a guy. Very important. It was on account, listen to me ladies, never forget this. Never forget this. Your primary ministry or a fixed ministry that God has put for every lady is to be a help meet for the man. So it doesn't matter what crusades you have to do in the future. It was the first mention of a woman was to be able to help the man in his assignment. Is that true? The Bible says, and God said, it is not good for the man I have created and given an assignment to be alone. It is not good. He said, and I will make a help meet, a help suitable. Ladies say, I'm a help suitable. Say it with confidence. I'm a help suitable. Because there are some of you that have gone through things in life that have abused this statement. You feel that you are not a help to somebody. We'll talk about that. You're a help suitable. And the Bible says, her desire shall be to her husband. Her desire shall be to her husband. So when you love the man, you respect him, you honor him. Sarah called Abraham Lord. It's not a sign of worship. The word Lord means there, I esteem you. There is a beautiful position that God has given a man and a woman. And ladies, hear me, this is very important. Because there is a satanic movement trying to awaken women, in quote, to their rightful place. And while that has worked well, it has crossed the boundary. Are you following me now? Where ladies believe that they can be a man, 
Ladies believe they can be everything. There are all kinds of foundations rising up. Orchestrated by demons. That are bringing ladies into rebellion. Against their husbands and in the home. And they think. Let me tell you something. Your respect for the man. Especially when you get married. Is not just a function of his ability to provide a loan. While that is true. If your respect for the man is tied just because of his ability to provide, you are violating scripture. Because agape is love without conditions. It is a position that God has put you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? We have to rush. Now we come to the world of the ladies. Guys, listen very carefully. Love does not mean purpose for the lady. Get it very clearly visionless brothers destiny shaking men of god i announce to you that love for the lady has nothing to do with your destiny carry your destiny and your crusades and your one million salvation target and pack it away when you are talking about love from the sister's perspective sisters if i'm talking can you say amen because some of you have been trying to tell the guy you are so happy that he's seated near you now you say oh god let him say it God has answered your prayer already. Hallelujah. You see, because of the fragile nature, the fragile nature of the lady and her emotional configuration, did you know that the emotional configuration of a lady was designed on purpose? Are you following me now? There are some of you ladies, you are trying to make yourselves become men. Stop it! Two men cannot live in the same home. Hallelujah. God designed this side of you to be able to compliment the man. Some ladies are as hard as a rock. As hard as a rock. It's not a gift to your husband. No, it's not a gift. No man that I know would cherish that. I'm not talking of, I mean, being strong and stable. I'm talking of being hard, insensitive, emotionless. You are a man. You are not a woman. A woman was not designed that way. A woman was designed to respond. A man was designed to absorb. A woman will respond. Are you learning something? Those outside, if you are following me, say amen. Hallelujah. So, love for a lady means, number one, it means attention. All guys say attention. attention. Say it, attention. attention. In fact, let me say it the way I say it all the time. Maximum care and attention. Write it. <laughs> Those who are guilty are laughing. Maximum what? It's like a graph. You know that song? Nothing, no place. You must gauge that tape. Ladies will stretch you until they see the highest of the attention. Listen, let me tell you something, guys. Attention for a lady is almost like purpose for you. When you do not give a lady attention, and now we are going to define what we mean. Because this word is falling on different soils. We need to redefine it. Hallelujah. It means care. Everybody say care. You must be caring. To be caring means to be sensitive to needs. To be concerned. It means time. Everybody say time. Very important. Time. It means affection. Affection. This is an emotional bonding. Not sex. Emotional bonding. For God's sake. Emotional bonding. If you want to be a priest, go to the seminary. If you want to get into a relationship, open your heart and allow that emotional dimension to find expression in every relationship. Praise the Lord. So, for the guy, what's the difference? Now, that does not mean, listen, please understand this. That does not mean 
these other qualities I mentioned in the lady are not appreciated in the life of the man. Are you following me now? But according to the order of priority. So if, if you're going out with Taiwo now and you meet and you say, Taiwo, do you know what the Lord is doing in our midst? How was that meeting? And Taiwo is looking at you. She's smiling because she's trying to respect you. But I assure you, she's not hearing what you are saying. Praise the Lord. Guaranteed, she's not hearing what you are saying. You ate her food, licked the plate. You didn't even say whether the food is nice or not. This lady took out time, bought these heels. How many of you have seen these heels? Brothers, don't tell lies. If you appreciate it, clap for her, Jare. And you just come with your anointing that has blinded your eyes. And all you see is souls, even on your wife who is already saved. Ladies, tell the brothers, change. Shout it again, change. Ah, you are in for a shock this night. We've not started though. Hallelujah. So look up please. We have a lot to cover. Respect and honor. There are many of you ladies. You are so rude, hostile. You wonder why no guy comes around you. Because they see themselves every time they see you. disrespectful you are rude cruel you don't talk to anybody with respect that's how i am no brother wants to mortgage his prophetic destiny for that kind of wife is that true brothers let me tell you something don't you think prayers is covering the eyes of the brothers they are watching oh yes they are watching the bible says be wise like serpents. The brothers are watching. They are watching you as you are doing this, this manly thing you are doing. No respect. You are just shouting at the guy. And somebody that has been trusting God just says, Lord, thank you for answering my prayers. I've, I've received from you. Every man is looking for a woman who will compliment him. Ladies, I want to give you a big shocker right now. There's no man that I know who is looking for a preacher. Everybody is looking for a woman who can be a wife to him. He's already a preacher. He doesn't need another one. Ladies have this funny thing that they, you feel the more you are entering the anointing, the more attractive you are becoming for the guy. It's such a big mistake. The guy is looking at his children. He already knows he's busy. You are busy just like him. The guy is looking at who can help, who can cook at home. You're already going for five crusades in a week. He won't marry you. He doesn't want to die for nothing. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? That's why we have a welfare department to help us. We can fast happily. Why? There is a consolation. Imagine if all we have is prayer band. We're in trouble as the ministers. Hallelujah. Please appreciate both of them. God bless you. So we have to get it clear. Love is very, very important. When the concept of love is not defined from the kingdom perspective, there is going to be chaos and anarchy. Hallelujah. Have you seen a lady look at a guy? Guys, when the lady comes to you and says you are selfish. Ah! Me, selfish. I'm providing money. I'm paying the children's school fees. Hallelujah. And the lady is saying you are selfish. And you are now wondering, is it that I'm not purpose driven? Am I not praying enough? What she's saying is, you are not defining love from my perspective. Are you following me now? Very important. Now before we start, Pastor Jake spoke about it here, but let me define certain things. The qualities that a guy must have before you think of entering a relationship and a lady 
We have to talk about that quickly. There are qualities. Listen. Please look up. If these qualities are not in you, and you have been dreaming of asking a lady out in this place, you better wake up from that dream. Wake up in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Arise, thou that sleepest, and let Christ give you light. So wake up tonight and listen. There are many brothers that think because you are macho and broad-chested and tall, dark and handsome, it just means that every lady is standing desperate like a leaf. Better repent of your pride and listen to these qualities that we have to explain. Is anybody following me tonight? I already told you to laugh from the beginning. Look up, please. The Bible says for us to have no business with the unfruitful work of darkness. Before you even consider a relationship or marriage with anybody, let me tell you something. That person must be genuinely born again. Write it. This is not part of the quality. This is what even qualifies you to begin to look at other qualities. Must be born again. We live in a generation where ladies are becoming the Holy Spirit who have the exclusive ability to change any Romeo they like. Let me tell you something. Come out of what you watched in that Nigerian film. Don't get up and go and yoke. See, look up. Every lady, every true godly lady must submit herself to the man. The only choice you have is to choose the kind of head you submit to. Hallelujah. Don't choose any kind of head that will come and kill you. He must be born again. What does it mean to be born again? To submit to the governing authority of Christ. The governing authority of the word. A man that does not submit to the word of God can kill you. There is nothing to give him boundaries. There is nothing to define the terms of his relationship or marriage with you. There is nothing to convict him. You can't afford to go out with a man who is not born again. There are many of us, it's those that are not born again that you like. You say they are nicer than the brothers. But they will take you to hell. And you won't see any of the brothers in hell. We are all going to heaven. Hallelujah. Say he must be born again. Guys, say she must be born again. Every lady that threw every great man in the Bible and in history were nice and beautiful ladies. Most of them did not have respect for the things of God. Hallelujah. If you marry a lady that is not born again, and it's not serious with God. Some of you say, uh-uh, but the guy is nice. Say that day, Pastor Jakes even saw him. Didn't he greet you, sir? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, I'm answering a lot of questions here. Do not confuse morality with the presence of the Holy Spirit in a man. Are you listening to me? Willpower can only take you so far. You do not know the power of, I mean, Satan and demons outside of the word of God. When you know that, you will know that morality is not enough. See, let me tell you something. You can get a course you don't like for five years. You can struggle it, wrestle it, complain about it and just finish. But when you get married, after 40 years, that man will change and wreck your life. And you will wish you were dead. Some of you, that's the case in your families. Now you have an opportunity to choose. Hallelujah. So are you ready now? Now there are certain qualities that a Christian brother should have. We're, we're not talking about marriage yet. We're talking about relationships now. So every brother, every Christian brother or Christian sister that desires a godly relationship. We expect you to be building yourselves or to have built yourselves in this area. Hallelujah. Now ladies look up. I know that if I'm to call two or three ladies now, we don't have the time and ask you, what kind of man do you want? You first smile and say, hey. Hallelujah. 
you will just carry your handbag. It's already written there. Because you've been praying about it. You bring out your hundred point agenda list. The guy must have the ability to carve his eyebrows. He must understand about nail filing and the rest. We don't want a brother with oil on his face as if they fried egg on the face. He must be posh and clean. Oh, you think we don't know? <laughs> Hallelujah. I like a brother that will do this, do that, do that. You want a brother that is exposed. Don't want anybody who will be disgracing you in the public. Praise God. You go to a restaurant before they see anything. They've not even prayed. He has started disgracing you. He thinks he's in his room. Now you are embarrassed. Ladies have a lot of things. But let me tell you tonight. Look up please. All those things will not work. Period. Did you hear me? All those things will what? Because even you, you are not prepared for that kind of man. The only man that fits all those qualities you are writing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not looking for a wife. But he has made us his ambassadors. Are you listening to me? You cannot say, oh, this guy must... Be. There are ladies who are so meticulous... Say, if I look at his skin, it must be fresh and this. Let me not see any funny thing. It must be without blemish. No, the lamb that will be slain. Listen, it's not wrong. It's just childish. You wrote it when you were in secondary school. Now you came to the university. Tear it. You are growing. That's, that's just the remedy. What you need is not deliverance. It's just growth. The Bible says, when I was a child, you were writing that when you were trying to keep yourself busy to write SSC. This is almost 10 years now. Tear that thing. Grow up. Face a real world like a woman and a man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are certain virtues, Pastor Jakes called them and I'll write it, cardinal virtues. That means there are some virtues that eventually they will develop themselves. Listen, ladies, look at me. If you are looking for a perfect man, you have no ministry in the life of that man. Are you listening to me? The purpose of the lady is to complete the man. To help his inadequacy. So if you are looking for a man who is already perfect, you don't have a ministry in the life of that man. Praise the Lord. Mm. Are you getting blessed? Alright ladies, what qualities should you look for in, in the guy? And guys, these are the qualities you should be building yourself in. Number one, honesty and sincerity. Quality number one. Any guy coming around your life who is not honest and sincere, pack your load and run. Don't pray about it. I'm already telling you the answer. Run. Honesty and sincerity. The brother must be honest must be sincere you can't be at the back of ribadu that you know that part that dark part you are just sitting there and they just call and say ah maybe your wife or your girlfriend or whatever calls you and say ah I've, I've arrived lagos sky i just got there right now and she says are you serious well, how was the journey? She said, I'll call you later. I'm even too tired. She said, I understand. Immediately you drop. You just lie to the girl that is a distance call. It's your relative from UK that is calling you. No sincerity. Or you're calling one lady and the lady just comes and you pick up the call. You say, ah, you safe. As, as the money entered, that's not enter. Hurry up now. Don't waste my time. I, I have a beautiful girl here to buy something for her. Why are you wasting my time? And you are lying. Sisters, are the brothers not like that? Brothers, don't feel bad. You know me. I always balance the equation. <laughs> Hallelujah. A dishonest brother will produce a dishonest husband. 
a dishonest father, a dishonest leader, and will kill you. Are you listening to me? Deal ruthlessly with dishonesty. It's better for the brother to say, Mio, I'm trusting God. God has not helped me yet. This shoe you are seeing is my only one. This trouser is the only one. This shirt is the only one. But the spirit of faith is in me. You are seeing me pray in every koinonia. I'm sweating in your presence. You are seeing that we are flogging out this thing. The door will open one day. Is that correct? Many of you ladies, you like guys lying to you. You have itchy ears. You like it so. The guy just comes to you and he's laughing and he just says, Hi, how are you? And this is not how he speaks. So just because you came. And the guy comes and he's bouncing and he likes you. And he says, oh, Sweetheart, I was wondering. Um, so let me talk to this guy. I need to be at the airport tomorrow. What's your tomorrow like? I'm going to take the first flight tomorrow. I have to be back. There's something my, my dad sent a consignment. And can you imagine? This is boys. You know, they are taking my humility for granted. And the lady's melting. Hey. You know it's a lie. Your roommates are watching from their window. You know it's a lie. You like it so. You go back and you carry the lie and you are telling your roommates. You are, you are saying it as if you don't believe him. But you are saying it to increase your reputation. You are claiming that you don't like it. But you are telling everybody, shut up if you don't like it. Why are you telling everybody? Say, can you imagine? That guy came and met me and he was talking about one airport in me. He wants to play with me. Sister B, can you imagine? that guy? And you are claiming that you are not enjoying what he's saying. Honesty. Number two. The guy must be teachable. Lady say teachability. Any brother that is not teachable is going to drown you. You will follow him together and enter an ocean of trouble and he will drown you. And brothers, this is where we have to be very careful. Because you see, we guys are egotistic in nature. Are you following me now? It's very difficult. There are some brothers here. God must help you tonight. Your deliverance has started. From your culture, women don't talk to men. From your culture, women don't advise men. Is that true? Some of you are from royal families. And you are taking your village everywhere you go. Even inside your relationship. So you're with the lady and she's trying to advise you and she's saying, um, sweetheart, have you considered this? We so said, look, let this be the last time. Even the Bible said, wives, submit. Submit means shut up. Don't try me, oh. You are entering the fire and the lady is saying, honey, look at this. We're entering fire. See, which fire? Guys, fire is burning. You are saying, which fire? Where's the fire? And later you carry the girl and put together in the fire and it's burning two of you. Later he said, ah, it's true, this thing looks like fire. When it has burnt you and it's almost killing you. Brothers, be teachable. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of great strength. These ladies may look like they don't know anything, but I tell you something. If you are humble and you can listen, you will learn a lot of things. Any brother that is not teachable and arrogant and just believes you are the alpha and omega of that relationship, the lady should shut up. Even if she's speaking nonsense, one day she'll say something that is sensible. You must listen. Many husbands have entered into trouble Many husbands have done different things that, that one plot of land that somebody came to swindle you. Land of 10 million, you sold it for 2 million. Your wife was telling you, be careful, be careful. Say be careful for what all these women, they are too emotional. There are many of you, if you will be teachable. You know what teachability is? Teachability is... Your willingness to learn and your willingness to accept when you're wrong. That's why we taught ourselves in our character building series on four words. What's the first one? Can you remember everybody? What's the first one? Please. You must say please. What's the second one? I'm sorry. Apologize when you're wrong. Number three. Thank you. You must tell people if they do good for you 20 times, say thank you 20 times. What's the last one? 
God bless you. You must bless people. So you must be teachable. Let's hurry up. Number three. Brothers, you must be visionary and responsible. There are many guys, you have not finished managing yourself. Don't add a woman into it. There are many guys, you, you have not led yourself. You don't have self-management. You are careless. You are indisciplined. Now you want to bring another lady and add her into your predicament. You must be visionary. When you hold a lady and say, we are going out, where are you going to? I always give this example. How many of you have climbed bike? And the bike man told you, you were asking him, do you know this place? Do you know CGC? Before he finished, he said, yes. Later, he starts going with you. He just passes somewhere. He says, oh, God, this is not the road. He says, oh, sorry, I forgot. Then he turns back. Later, he comes and just passes and he's heading towards Rema. And you say, oh, God, stop. Do you know where we are going? He says, I thought you knew the place. That's how many guys are. You just bring the bike and hit the seat and tell the lady, oh, yeah, climb. The lady, I used to say, climb. Is it not me? Once they climb from gear one, you go to the last one. You are just speeding. The lady says, sorry, you, where are we going? He says, leave me. Are we not, have we arrived there? Be patient. After 10 years, you have not defined where you are going. Never go out with any guy you don't know where he's taking you to. You better know where you are going, no? Don't lead yourself like a sheep to the slaughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very important. He must be responsible psychologically. <laughs> a guy who is always crying like a baby does not need relationship. He needs help and growth. Somebody just say, Kai, your hair is looking bushy. He's crying. It's the lady that says, come. <laughs> he says, see, things happen like that. The guy says, why is everybody doing to beat me? You are embarrassing the lady. They'll say, Abba, sister, is it that there was no guy? Which baby did you go and carry like this? You enter a program, there's a seat here. They say, sorry, stand up for somebody else. The guy's already crying. The lady now stands up to hold him and say, don't cry. You are not ready for a relationship, my brother. Please, please, please. Focus on your finances or something else, your spiritual life. Because let me tell you something. There are pressures you are going to absorb in your life. Hallelujah. As a leader, you don't let people see your tears anyhow. It will kill their spirits. Hallelujah. Every lady needs a man that she can be secured around. A man that can protect her. I was told of a story that armed robbers came somewhere. Open this door now. Bow, bow, bow. The man just tapped the wife and said, stand up. No, he, he was pretending like he was sleeping. She just said, honey... Honey, as if you were sleeping. Honey, you must wake up. Oh. Are you hearing what is happening? You say, I'm hearing now. Why would you just keep quiet? The guy was sweating and shaking. True life story. The woman got up and started praying in tongues around her house. They were shouting, if you let us open this door by ourselves. This and that and that. Do you know that eventually when the armed robbers left and the woman came, she found the man dead. Yeah. What killed him? So who is protecting who? There are many of you, you like women, but you are very fearful. You don't have courage. You are not emotionally balanced. Please don't think of getting into a relationship that you'll be crying all the time. As if you are going to JS1. You know how people go to JS1 and they cry. At a point, the lady is feeling, oh God, did you bring me to protect this? What did you bring me to do in this life? You are not a man. Hallelujah. So, that, that's it for the guys. Cardinal virtues. Ladies, brothers, if you love your destiny and where God is taking you, make sure you look at this. <laughs> Number one, the ladies must be submissive. Every lady says submission. Look up, please. Submission is not weakness. Submission is the ability to bring your strength under control. Are you following me now? What is submission? The ability to bring your strength under control. You see this from many of our mothers. The man can be shouting. 
saying something and, and our mothers are not wrong but they will just keep quiet you will be wondering and say if I were my mother eh? how about we enter the same trouser say my mother my father is always doing with her she is even doing like Musev eh? all these village with me how about no man can try that you better shut up oh. you better shut up because your mother was once a young CC like you and was bouncing like that ask her why she's calm now Hallelujah. Many ladies have this funny. There are many things that we are doing that we don't know is childishness. This night you will see that it's just sheer childishness. Hallelujah. Submission. Very important. Bringing your strength under control. Number two. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm just summarizing what Pastor Jakes has already preached, so we have to run. Number two, teachability. Ladies, you must also be teachable. There are some ladies, Gamaliel, you always teach everybody. Gamaliel was the person who taught Paul. Some of you are Gamaliel. You sit in the midst of brothers. Do you know this? The brother comes to talk to you. Yeah, just like a Proverbs this and that said. This and that. And you think you are impressing him. The guy just gets up. Just tells his friend, babe, let's just go somewhere. That's not it. It's not the way forward. This is nonsense. As you are talking, the lady is just saying, this is not a wife, this is a man. You are not teachable. There are some of you, no man can sit you down and talk to you. No man. You do something, so even if he's a pastor, you do something, Pastor Jack said, alright, two of you come to see me. He said, me, see you. Nobody brought me into this world though. Even my father doesn't, you see that? So who do you want to come and marry you? Who do you want? Be fair. Who do you want to come and marry this kind of trouble? teachability number three sisters you must be physically attractive the brothers are not just spirits they dwell in bodies they have eyes my friend Jimmy says love is blind marriage will open your eyes sisters look up brothers look up too my brother you better don't deceive yourself if you are going far huh and you don't want to run it. Now when I talk of beauty. Beauty is a relative statement. But you must. Don't carry a lady. That you will not be proud of. Huh? You just see somebody says. My younger is just my younger sister. Or you just look and say. Oh boy, it's one lady that is disturbing me. Oh me I'm tired. I don't know what to do. You kill the lady. If you behave to a lady like that. You don't deserve her. Get out of her life and let the person who deserves her come in. Are you following me? Very important. Don't find yourself. You must be proud of the lady. Ladies, be physically attractive. That does not mean be pornographic or nude. You are a Christian. It means be nice. You are young. Don't celebrate your 50th birthday when you are 22. Be patient. The time will come. And all the brothers say... Amen. It doesn't mean you must have all the money. Look, we are watching. Brothers are happy. When they see a nice sister, you are, you, are, you are taking care of yourself. How much is powder? The type we use, how much is it? The type you use is 10,000. That's too expensive. Get the normal. Who will know? Who will know? It's only among yourself, ladies, that you know. Will we know? See a lady just comes, there's, there's fats on your face, oily face, you are just moving, walking anyhow. You are just walking any. you can't even compose yourself. They are sharing food. Join the line, you want to collect, you are doing all these kind of attitudes. The brothers are watching. You need to tell yourself, myself, behave. Behave. The Bible says you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. behave hallelujah you must be physically attractive if you have one shirt iron it don't carry a shirt that is twice your size yes your mother gave it to you Adero tell us reduce it Abba. 
Must everybody know it was a gift? You just carry needle and fold it and fold it and clip it. Can they reduce it? The brothers are not idiots. Why we are praying in tongues? Shut <laughs> Yeah. Please, brothers, look for what looks like your future. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I come to the brothers now? Oh, I must come. You know me. Hallelujah. You see, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said, don't criticize anybody until you have done twice what the person has done once. Hallelujah. Brothers, if you want that kind of glamorous lady, you must start working on yourself as up. Are you following me now? There are many brothers, you are bushy, you don't comb your hair, the dust is dry season, but you still see at the back of your shoe mud of rainy season. You are no, I will talk. You must be physically attractive. You wear one one singlet for two months. It's easy to wear something on top. Who will know? You can't buy perfume of five hundred naira. You just come. You are sweating. They say, "Hug your neighbor." Before they do anything, you want to hug. How much is sure? At least that's the basic one. Listen, you are a leader. You don't bob your hair. This side is more than this side. It's not like maybe it's a style. It's just disorganization of your hair. Because for a long time, you can't even go to the barbing salon and say, just have it. Let it be nice. You finish bathing, even oil. You just, you are trying to comb it. You don't know whether it's back or front. You throw the comb away and get up. Just come for koinonia. And you just come and you are smiling. You think it's everybody that is smiling with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your, your clothes are always rumpled. Always. Always. Always rumpled. Hmm? Go and wear one kind of thing and carry one one kind of tie. You will stop here. You now wear it and you are coming and you are just eyeing the sister. She's not looking at you. I assure you. I assure you. I assure you she's not looking at you. Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. We have to run. You must be physically attractive both parties be smart we are not saying go and borrow everybody's clothes to come for koinonia with uh -uh. if you have been doing it stop it's not necessary god has blessed you god has blessed you hallelujah you are borrowing your roommate's shoe every week the day your roommate says coming for miracle service too on that day you wear your palms and sit outside even if you palms you have wear it honorably polish it can I tell you something, brothers? I discovered something with ladies. They are not as materialistic as we think. I tell you, there are some ladies that love God and they are willing to start and go with you only if you will be honest. Sisters, is that true? It's not all of you that should say yes because some of you are very materialistic. I'm coming to you. So this was a summary of what Jake shared. Hallelujah. Very important. So how many of us have been blessed by those qualities? How many of us know that there are some of them we need to walk in ourselves? Don't lie now. Lift your hands. Don't pretend. I appreciate your honesty. This is why we are here. And God is helping us. Do you know why you need to work on these qualities? It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. But make sure there are honest efforts. Are you following me now? So that you can be a blessing to one another. Everybody say, I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Say one more time. I'm not a curse. I'm a blessing. Hallelujah. Alright, so we're going to talk quickly about 
entering into a relationship now. The process. The process of entering into a relationship. Again, let me have one lady and one guy. Please, can we have them quickly? Quickly, we have to. One lady, Taiwo, please come again. Aaron, God bless you. One lady and one guy. Hallelujah. Please look up. There is no crime. Everybody look up, please. There is no crime, brother, in seeing a sister that you love and you find yourself affectionate about. It does not make you unspiritual. Emoji, hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? There is no crime. <laughs> there is no crime. Hallelujah. When you find out as a brother, a good Christian brother, hearing the word in a, in a, in a meeting like, look at Koinonia, inside, people are inside, outside. Now you, are, you have been seeing this sister, she's in the choir. Her name is Taiwo. Hallelujah. Always ministering. Something is moving. Something is changing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please listen. I have to rush. We have to be out of here. Now, listen, brothers. When you want to end, let me look at. Look at me. Do you know why this thing keeps backfiring for some brothers? Let me tell you one of the reasons. The Bible says the labor of the fool will weary him. Not because there is no road. He doesn't know the road to the city. The reason why many of you, it's not necessarily because you are not nice. You don't know how to do this thing. You will not seek advice. You will not seek counsel. You just see a lady like this after Koinonia. Worship team. They are holding their hands to pray. You can't even wait. Let them finish the prayer. You've got to stand close. You are just moving around. You can't wait. They say hug 20 people. You didn't hug anybody. You are just gallivanting around the worship team square here. As soon as they finish, just say, sister, please, can I talk to you? Now the lady said, well, for the benefit of doubt, we just finished fellowship. Say, I've been watching you. I have a policeman. You have been watching her. What else? I've been watching you. And uh, the other day, I, I was I was talking with my friend just says please please I know where you are going please I beg you just save yourself any stress it won't work you just get up and go to your room say this koinonia lady self now I'll, let me just kukuma be sitting outside you look you you will pray these are people that are seeing us pray they know I'm a man of God yet you won't say yes hallelujah listen Listen. Everybody say friendship. friendship. Say it, friendship. friendship. This is the first step to entering a relationship. You can't come and meet a perfect stranger because of your unbelieving roommates did it. You just saw one, one, one lady who just came in 100 level in her innocence. Her mother told her, when you go here, don't do now. The guy just came to threaten her. And they lay out of fear. She just said, oh yeah, yes. Because she doesn't know what to have. You too, you were inspired by that testimony. You now got up and met a Christian sister who has been hearing the word. You just come and meet her. Say, I want to marry you. Pray about it. What is wrong with you? Eh, your father did it. So what? Change. See, listen. If your wife is your best friend, that naturally tells you that the probability of finding her among your friends is very high. Correct? The best friend is the best among friends. Is that true? Some of you, you don't have friends. This is what makes the sister know that you are ready to enter a relationship. You don't work with anybody. You don't greet anybody. In Suddenly, ah, after miracle service, you have still roaming around worship team. You, you don't greet anybody. You are not in any group. After prayer, band finishes praying, you just turn. You are, you, you are always alone. You are talking alone as if you are out of your mind. When the sister starts seeing you, near, she's even afraid. She doesn't know whether you are fine or not. Something wrong with this brother? Does he need counseling? You must be friendly. 
Are you listening to me? Listen. Guys, let me give you a big secret. If you can make a lady laugh genuinely and sincerely, you have taken some good steps into that journey. I give you a tip that will work for you. Hallelujah. Don't carry your boring, boring life. Your roommates should test run whether you are sociable or not. They are always running away from you. Ah, flog it in your room first before you go and disgrace yourself. To one lady. You are in love. You are pretending like you are not in love. You are just boning your face and coming to the girl. You say, can I see you? The girl say, I'm busy. Come now, you yourself. Be friends. One of the best ways of being friends is join a department. Join a department. One of the benefits of a department is that it will help your social life. Is that true? The worship team are so, so, if you see them, you'll be amazed. They love one another. Some of them were not like that when they started. Is that true? The ushers, ushers, are you there? They love themselves. Who do you love? Who loves you? You don't know. When you enter, when, see, service in the house of God is a big helper to take you out of inferiority and complex. They'll tell you lead prayer. Now you lead prayer. And when you lead prayer, ah, after the prayer meeting, Tyler says, wow, that was nice. Oh, pure sisterly love. No strings attached. You too, you are happy. You didn't know how to do it. Now you can watch Aaron do it. You are, you are learning. Who will know that you don't know? Tomorrow now you come, they say, oh, go on another. You are making progress. Are you making progress? It's not like you are, you join the department with the intention to marry the lady. But you are becoming sociable. It's giving them an opportunity to see your sincere heart. Is that true? One day the lady comes late, you stand up for her. Ah, ah. She says, wow, that was so kind. You are learning. You are reducing your journey, you don't know. Some of you come from nowhere. You see people who have been functioning, they are taking their time. You think you have the spirit of, you just run from nowhere. They don't know you, you have no history. You just came for koinonia twice. You think you want a wife, you just come and carry anybody. We won't give you our ladies like that. Come and sit down. Share the word of God. We want to be sure of the kinds of things our ladies, uh, you, they can't be praying in tongues. You come with your Babylon from wherever because you did talking for two weeks. You think it's enough to carry them. No, sir. They are not that cheap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Entering into a relationship. Take time to build friendship. See, not friendship for the purpose of relationship. Be a free person. Be happy with people. Are you listening to me? And ladies, there are some of you, you are not helping yourself. Make sure when brothers smile and greet you, you just say he likes me. Abba! You are in a church. What kind of insecurity is that? A brother smiles at you, he just hugs you. You go back and say, I've been watching. It's a lie. It's a lie. Please, this guy is pressing into God. It's a lie. Don't blackmail him. He loves God. You just see a brother like you and the next thing you start becoming edgy and funny. Everybody say friendship. So, Aaron begins to be friends. Maybe from department or something. He may be in the same department. He may be in the different department. You know, you are just serving in the house of God genuinely. It gives room for the sincerity of your heart to be tested. Are you listening to me? You are consistent in the body of Christ. At least the lady sees you. You are a face that they know around. She knows what you are hearing. You know what she's hearing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Never go out with a guy who you don't know who is feeding him and you don't know what is entering his head. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The second thing is seek counsel. Seek counsel. Many people think this is an act of immaturity. Many of you do not know. Look at me brothers. Let me give you a secret. If you don't respect us, these ladies respect us. Are you listening to me? By the time you start meandering around them, they will call us. They will say, sorry, oh, this guy has been roaming around not to be presumptuous. And you, you think you are playing smartness. 
Every time you see us, you will claim as if the lady is this and that, while the lady has already told us. And you'll be disgracing yourself. Hallelujah. Very important. Seek counsel. There is nothing wrong. We are not demons. You can ask Pastor Jake. There are times that he comes to tell me, ah, so so and so so person. This guy likes this person. You can even see me jumping. I'm saying, yeah. Our people are entering good relationships. There are some relationships when we hear you have entered, we start crying. We start crying. You don't know the guy, but we, we know him. Hallelujah. Please seek counsel. Seek counsel. Don't seek counsel from unbelievers who tell you just try, oh. There is an age where guys will be coming, oh. You will get to an age, nobody will come, oh. Just try. Uh uh. Hallelujah. When you are entering into a relationship, friendship, friendship. Now, that does not mean you cannot sit. I know of stories of perfect strangers. They, they call it what they call it love at first sight. I don't know what probability of it works in Nigeria. In Nigeria. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Seek counsel. And then, bless you, sir. The next step is listen, go to God. And I, I want to talk a bit here about the concept of the will of God. Look up, please. As a brother, you love God. You are not a prophet, you are not an apostle. You are just a sincere believer who loves God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now you see Matilda. You've been looking at her and truly, oh, genuine love, not lost. If you find out that what is wrong with you is lost, come for counseling, not relationship. Counseling. We won't condemn you, but we'll help you. Genuine love, sincere love. Now you are looking at Matilda. Ah, ah. You've sought counsel. You go to God in prayer. Listen, listen. Now I want to correct a very erroneous concept about what people call hearing God. How many of you have heard what they call vision, seeing vision? That has put a lot of brothers under pressure. Please and please. The vision in Joel 2 was not women. Is that clear? Don't you brothers, please. I deliver you from any heart attack you want to give yourself. To force yourself to dream dreams and see visions. There is nothing wrong. The Bible says God is at work in us both to will. Hallelujah. I love God. My heart is sincere. Are you following me now? Now Aaron sees Matilda. And you just say, oh, did you have a vision? It has made a lot of brothers to come with stories about their concept of the will of God. Because they know that if they, that's the gate pass into your life. So they, they've tried and tried. They just say, oh yeah, talk. God told me, please open the gate for me to enter. Be careful. God shows people visions. You don't see vision for any area of your life. When it comes to relationship, you suddenly become a prophet. Who sent you? Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Don't be embarrassed. Ah, ah. The other day, you saw Rose. And ah, when you saw Rose, even you, you wouldn't lie. You were praying. The prayer point just disappeared. You cannot even know what I was saying again. And it was sincere. Ah, you try to say myself, behave, please. I'm in the presence of God. You were trying to look at Pastor Jakes. You were seeing Rose again. Ah. Something is happening. Don't feel embarrassed. Are you hearing me, brothers? Don't feel embarrassed. The only thing is check it. Don't be foolish. Some of you, if you see that to you, that's God said. Uh-uh. That's not God said. Because there are some brothers that what is happening to you is just infatuation. Ah. You saw this lady's hair. And wow, you are smiling. One day you see her coming out of Ribadu in the morning. She has not taken her bath. You just hear and say, ah, is that the girl I saw? Ah, I've changed my mind though. And you want to marry her. She will be pregnant too. Don't forget. Help us Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? If God shows you a vision, if you are sitting and you just see Abigail, 
C21. Is that how many now, Ribadu? Ribadu is your wife. You just say, Yes, Lord. Abigail, where are you? Better come. Don't stop my destiny. You don't do that. The, listen, the Bible says, And Mary kept these things to herself. And you come, you can come to Pastor Jakes and say, Sir, this is what I saw about this guy. Because I saw this about this guy. I saw this guy ab about the lady. They can be able to help you. Are you listening to me? Don't just take initiative on the strength of your vision alone. Your vision can mislead you. The Bible says we see in part. And so we what? Prophesy in part. Are you getting blessed? Please, listen. You love God. You are praying for a life partner. You are saying, oh God, please bring a lady into my life who will love you who will fear you, who we can stand together and accomplish the purposes of God for our lives. Hallelujah. Suddenly you come for miracle service, you just see Natina. Ah. And now you, you cannot even describe what is happening to you. Mama. <laughs> now Mama is wondering, ah, ah, Aaron, what is happening? I saw this lady just once and I Many of you feel embarrassed. You even cast it. Uh -uh. It may not be demonic. Are you listening to me? Try to establish good friendship with a person. And when you feel you've received advice and the time is ripe, listen. That takes me to the next step. Brothers have courage. Ladies don't kill. I think sisters, we need to tell the brothers this. Say brothers. brothers. We don't kill. Speak. Speak. Say one more time. Brothers, Brothers. Don't look at yourselves. Look at the brother. Brothers. Brothers. We don't kill. We don't Speak. Speak. The brother says, sisters. I'm not afraid. Listen. There are some of you that kick any guy that comes. Listen, look at me. Look at me. Koinonia, hear me inside and outside. Never, please, let me start with the sisters. Never see a brother, no matter how much you esteem him, that he comes to you and then you try to just do anyhow with him and say, hey, you don't know that shoe has size. You got up. Forget, don't let Koinonia fool you. I'm not your mate. Oh. Don't be stupid. If not because of koinonia that is the house of God, you, you, you cannot see your type, you come and stand. Don't do that. Don't do that. The brother you are laughing at today, wait and see the promises of God in his life. By the time what he's speaking comes to pass, you will be amazed. Are you following me now? I was told a humorous story that there was a time Bishop Oedeko asked a part. I was told, I don't know if it's true, please. Please, so I had it too. If it's not true, accept it as fiction. There was a man of God. <laughs> and the man of God said he asked one lady and she said no. He kept quiet. Then it was, there was nothing, just the promises of God. The treasure in earthen vessels locked up inside. Later on, he asked his current wife and she said yes. Some years Later on, they were in a program and he saw the former lady. Now she was also married. And he told his wife, he said, see, I asked this woman. And she said, no. The woman walked to her and said, thank you for telling my husband no. You think that woman will sleep? Hi! The woman will say, God, no. This is how my destiny passed me by. Many of you want ready-made. You don't want to pay the price and build. Hallelujah. When a brother wants to talk to you, Please give him listening ears. Especially when he comes with a heart of sincerity and responsibility. Even if you are not interested in the relationship, present yourself in a way and manner that will not discourage him. There are some brothers, when they ask one sister since 2010, they've not asked another one again. One day you wanted to ask the girl, she just, she was just, you were going here, she just came out, you just turned as if you want to clean a chair. No courage, your heart is failing you. Everybody say, take courage. take courage. Sisters, help our brothers. It's not easy to come and stand before a lady and start rapping and talking stories. 
Hallelujah. It's not easy. It takes a lot of courage. Brothers, is that true? Yeah. Especially when you start giving one kind of face. As if you don't like it. You finish praying in your room and say, God, change my story. Give the brother a chance. Give him a chance, please. Hallelujah. Is that true? There are many brothers here that are sitting. They want to enter a relationship. But ladies, you are hostile. You are rude. You leave an impression in the heart of the brother that will injure him. It's not fair. Is that true? And then brothers, take it easy. I know that no means wait for a guy. So if the lady tells you no, just don't say me, I don't take no for, I would, ah, 30 missed calls between Koinonia and her room. 30 missed calls. Five text messages. 500 Naira recharge card. You have called all her friends. Take it easy, brother. Haba. Take it, let her think. You say, I can't sleep. Uh-uh. You better check whether it's lost or love. Whatever is pursuing you, run to court. Run to court and go and flog it out with destiny. Don't be a pest around the lady like that. You are going for a lecture. You just say, ah. In fact, you know, I was about to call you. That's how you follow her. She's in the restaurant. You go there. Money that you wanted to go to Jordan Bookstore with. You paid for her food. Now you have not eaten. You are hungry. You've not done your assignment. You are failing. You are emaciating. You are dying. What is wrong with you? Your roommate say, what is wrong? You say, love. It's not love. Hallelujah. Are you learning something, please? Praise the Lord. Very important. Make sure you are convicted. There are some brothers here. Please look up and I must warn you. Everybody say double dating is wrong. Say one more time. Double dating is wrong. There are guys that have ladies in every faculty every faculty you have a representative and they don't know it's not good you are, you are a christian i hope you know that we don't believe in dating are you listening to me in the kingdom there is nothing called dating correct you know what dating is ladies let me explain to you so that you hate it very well dating is that you parade many ladies the bachelor Ask some of them out. Sleep with some of them. Do all you can do. And then start editing them one by one. One by one. One by one. Until you find the one that is suitable with you. You've slept with them. You've taken them out. Which lady? Do you know that every lady you see is somebody else's wife? You don't treat ladies like that. Is somebody learning something? Double dating is very wrong. Very, very wrong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So brothers, get close to the lady. Develop courage and talk. Sisters, be open. Don't conclude on a guy and just say, this is not my kind of guy. What do you know about all your destiny? Somebody you are seeing today that you say may not be your kind of guy may be the greatest blessing in your life. Is that true? Hallelujah. Let's rush. We have to pray. Now, let's assume you successfully get into the relationship. Say amen. amen. So you have flogged out issues and you are now in the relationship. What do you do? Please write. These are things that you must observe while during the relationship. Number one, practice communication. Practice what? Communication. One of the number one killers of marriages and relationship is no communication. Talk. No matter how bad issues are, talk. Talk. How many of you know that a quiet person can be more dangerous than a noisemaker? Because if somebody is quiet, you don't know what the person has in his heart or her heart. Talk. Talk. Hallelujah. See, because no matter how anointed you are, listen, when you get into a relationship, are you following me? Patience, come. When you get into a relationship, 
Now let's assume Abel is going out with patience. Abel, stand up. Assuming, come now, hurry up. Hold our hands. Let's save time, please. Hold our hands. Smile, you too now. Smile. <laughs> All right, come. Now, they are in a relationship. Please, everybody listen. Do you know, every time people come to me for counseling and prayers for relationship, I tell them, whenever you enter a relationship, please listen. See yourself as two farmers. Are you following me now? Two farmers holding a hole together. And you are going to the farm to go and plow the land. Ready-made relationship does not exist. Write it. Everybody has weaknesses and strengths. When you say you love somebody next time, you are saying you love a sum total of their liabilities and weaknesses. Many of you want a perfect man. You want a perfect woman. You will never find it because you are not perfect yourself. Are you listening to me? Now, Ebe, where are you from? District. You are from Kogi. Where are you from? Venice. Now, this is Kogi. This is Benue. Two separate cultures. Is that true? Now, they love God. They all come for Koinonia, for instance. For instance. For instance. Except otherwise. For instance. <laughs> Hallelujah. She has her mindset that came from culture. He has his mindset that came from culture. Do you know that there will be frictions? Are you following me now? Those frictions are not a sign that the devil is eating you people up. They are just a sign that you are human beings. Are you listening to me? What is the remedy? Communication. Two of you sit down now. Find somewhere and sit down. Come. Empty the shift for them. Sit down now. We are acting with you people. Communication. Communication. Talk about it. Hallelujah. The guy does not eat pepper. You, you like pepper. You like seeing the pepper. You can carry it and put it in your mouth. The first day you made gari for him. You put pepper. You were smiling. Ah, the guy just touched it and he, headache just came on him. And now the brother doesn't want to talk. Ah, this pepper is killing him. He said, do you like the food? I said, come on. This food was as sweet as you. And now you are, you are lying. Tomorrow you will suffer it again. She will make beans. Add pepper on it. She'll be telling everybody, you know my guy likes my cooking. He likes the pepper. Funny enough, this guy is dying. This pepper is killing him. Every time you eat her food, you must have a runny nose. Brother, what happened? I say, forget this. Everybody say communication. communication. Communication helps you to understand yourself. The Bible says husbands... Dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Love is not enough. Are you hearing me? Have you not seen a lovely roommate that you could not live with? How many of you love your roommates but you cannot take that same roommate next session? But you love them. Some of you, you that, some of you that are raising hands is your roommates that don't love you because of what you are doing. Hallelujah. Everybody say communication. It will enhance your relationship. Are you listening to me? There are many ladies that the moment you enter a relationship, you already have your expectations that only you know. I expect, at least I give this relationship five days, I should visit Chicken Republic. That's what you have in your heart. That's what you have wished and wondered. Every time I'm holding load, let the guy, that's what you have in your heart. Are you following me now? After five days, he doesn't take you out. He's paining you, but you cannot talk. Say it so that if it's not godly, you can flog it together. Are you listening to me? Communication is one of the number one killer. Roommates that don't talk always fight. The only way to know that he's angry is when he slaps you. You say, did he really hurt you? He said, it has been paining me. Why didn't you talk, Oga okay, roommate? Why didn't you talk? Many ladies, you are like that. You don't talk. You go and grumble to your friends and gossip to everybody and say, this guy, we went to the restaurant, Sam. They were putting the ice cream on the machine, Chicken Republic. He just started taking it. Couldn't we sit down? Me, I hate this thing. And you were laughing all through. The euphoria of the excitement. And the guy thought that that's what you like. He will repeat it again tomorrow. 
Hallelujah. You invited him for dinner. He wore one tie. The shirt was torn. He didn't notice. It wasn't his business. You tell him, ah, sweetheart, um, see, when there is this chemistry between both of you, you have come to be honest and true to yourselves. Are you following me now? And you can jokingly tell him, say, you, self, I'm going to buy you a new, a new trouser. That your trouser has tried. She has come into your life. You don't joke. You are always serious. You are always praying. You are always fasting. You don't discuss the things you should discuss. If all you are doing in your relationship is Bible study and prayer, you are not helping that relationship. Okay, sister, the Lord gave me a revelation. Shut up. Can't you talk about your lives? Are you not good? What is your best food? There are people, if we call some people in relationship now, you and you, what is your best food? The guy will say, Gary, is his best food. You, you say, is, is beans. You don't know yourselves. You are that much of strangers. Who is the Holy Spirit? You know, you know. What are the 12 names of disciples? You know, you know. When is Jesus coming? Soon, soon, you know. Where are two of you going? You don't know. Don't spiritualize things that you are supposed to do to help yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Everybody say communication. communication. Very important. There must be communication. During a relationship. Number two. Set boundaries. Everybody say boundaries. Paul said the, although we are not under the law. But the Bible says the love of God does what? Please set boundaries. Some of you were in the world. Is that correct? And you had relationships where you were in the world. You could have sex anytime you want. You can spend weekend in the guy's house anytime you want. You can bath with the guy in the same bathroom. Now you are born again. You have left Egypt. Force Egypt to leave your mind. In Jesus name. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Hallelujah. You must set boundaries. Stand up again, two of you. Come. This side, this side. Let's go. So you discuss. Abel, you are a great man. No, you are going far. But you are a man. Say, I'm a man. Part of the reason why you ask this lady out is because you are physically attracted to her. True or false? Please say it. True or false? That means if you get married to her, you will sleep with her one day. True or false? And the reason why you are not sleeping with her now is not because you are an angel or a spirit. It's because you love the Lord. True or false? When you enter a relationship, you are vulnerable by default. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying, believers? What does that mean? You define it. What rules that you don't define, you will cross boundaries without knowing. You can be a Christian. Over 60% or more of Christian relationships have people sleeping around the guy going to spend weekend in the girl's house, the girl going to from Koinonia now, today is Friday Abby. the grace of our Lord Jesus your load is outside, you just carry the guy takes you in his car and he just goes, I was a service, say nice even if it's Benny Hinn you watch throughout that night sin is at your door correct Say, but me, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I don't used to sleep with the guy. Yet, 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 keep going every day. The Bible says, and Lord settled near Sodom. He didn't enter Sodom. When they were coming to rescue him, where did they find him? In the middle of Sodom. This is how many people have gotten themselves into trouble. Discuss it. Sister, you are not firewood. Discuss it. You are emotional. Talk. Abel, you tell her. Say, look, I love God. And in this relationship, we are going to keep the values of the kingdom. If for any reason, any spirit or anything turns my head one day, don't be ashamed. This is somebody, are you saying it in, in the presence of the congregation? Please help me. Don't be disappointed that day. Just help me. Slap me or run. Just do something. Remind me of my destiny. Just put a picture of hellfire on your phone. Do something that will help me. Sister, listen. And I must say this. 
Listen, we are humans. Church people are hypocrites and liars. Me, I'm not like that. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Very important. You can't come and visit him by 11.30 in the night. Eh? He just had practicals morning till night. Then you came around. You say, I, 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 was, I was reading and I didn't know what to do with myself. Ah, you are looking for trouble, oh. You are looking for trouble. The brother is already on his boxers. He's trying to lie down. He's trying to sleep. Now you come in. He's going to marry you one day, oh. He's going to marry you one day. You are fast forwarding that day now. You will die. You are there to protect the brother's life, not to kill him. Can't you talk on phone? Am I, am I blessing you? This is the issue. I know we're out of time. We will pray, but we need to talk about this. It's very important. There are many anointed brothers that suddenly entered relationships and they found out that they are, they are sleeping with the lady and doing a lot of things to their own shock. Because number one, you didn't discuss it. Number two, you are not doing anything about it. Hallelujah. Very important. You must talk about it. Your roommates sleep around and they come and they are talking about all their experiences. All those devilish things. And you sit down, you are hearing it. Now it's affecting your mind. You don't know. You think because you are a Christian, it will just... No, it's affecting your mind. You are getting emotional. You are getting seduced by that statement. Before you know it, you find yourself and the innocent brother, because he likes you, will fall victim. Everybody say, I, I receive grace to set boundaries. Christians, I know what I'm saying may offend some of you because it's a kind of beg, Jare, your own. You have gone too extreme. Please, Abba. Well, if your destiny is colorful and you want to get there, Ask yourself a question. Are you ready for a child now? If you are not, behave. Brother, for every time you sleep with a lady, see the vision of a baby. Are you ready? If you are not, behave. Praise the Lord. Please define boundaries. Christian relationships should reveal the character of Christ. And you, sister... One day something comes upon the brother, whatever it is. Instead of you to help the brother, you now start going around. Ah! These brothers, I'm surprised. So, Koinonia, shut up, please. Did he tell you he's a spirit? Help him. Help him. Help him. Don't disgrace the brother. Oh, I will talk. Hallelujah. It's very important. Help the brother. And brother, help the sister. When she's calling you and you don't understand what she's saying in the phone. Be talking with one ear, be praying. Find a way, let your spirit be praying. Talk about the second coming of Jesus. Talk about the end of the age. Just say something that will bring the sister back to herself. Don't go and spend weekend in a guy's house. You are not married to him. All the sisters say amen. I know many Christian ladies. Once it's Friday, somebody comes from Lagos or somewhere. You go and spend, how can you go and spend weekend in the house of somebody you are already emotionally attached and physically attracted to? You are vulnerable. Hallelujah. You are going to go and bath. The brother is watching you. Ah. You, are, you want to kill the brother? You are bathing. The guy is just singing choruses around your bathroom. Or God go to the parlor. Trouble. If a guy lives in the house and you go, you can enter the parlor, you can enter the kitchen. But you, you begin to put yourself in trouble. See, all I'm trying to say is that create boundaries. Can I tell you something? Brother, when you start sleeping with a lady, I assure you, your chances of marrying her 
will diminish by a sizable factor because part of the things that you should make how make you want that lady is that she's keeping herself and it's supposed to be the blessing and consummation of marriage are you listening to me sister you just open up yourself to any brother he's just sleeping with you and telling you that don't worry in two weeks i'll give you an engagement ring you wait and go and hear what he's saying in the midst of his friends hallelujah do you know every time you sleep with a lady or you sleep with a guy that you are not married with there is a seed of resentment and hatred that comes that's what happened between adam and eve when they went out of the glory of god be careful be careful some of you watch every kind of film the guy is here the lady is here you are watching all okay, please god bless you this be seated you're watching every kind of film when i talk about all those film things some of you think it's not an issue hallelujah praise the lord put boundaries avoid things that arouse you people avoid things that arouse you people and get you into trouble hallelujah you just see the guy. You just come and fly on the guy. He's on the bed. You just fly. Ah. <laughs> and the brother is smiling as if he's in control of things. You better, you better start praying. You are not in control. Very important. Hmm. Hallelujah. Build together. Everybody say, I will define boundaries. You are in a relationship right now. You have not defined the boundaries. Do it tomorrow. Define it. How far is far? How far is far? Please define it. Hallelujah. Now, I will round up with this. There are many other things, but we are out of time. We really are out of time. Just give me a few minutes, five minutes, and we are out. Danger signs. Oh, this is important. You must write it. Danger signs that your relationship is nose diving or that your relationship may not work out. Danger signs. I must say this. Very important. Number one. When you find yourself consistently violating boundaries, that relationship may not work out. Did you hear what I said? Are you listening to me? What did I say? consistently violating boundaries no way a time will come look at me the lady will be so cheap or the guy will be so cheap they will be like a rag for you discontent will enter your heart is somebody hearing what i'm saying take these boundaries issues seriously I know some of you feel, why is he talking like this? Okay. Once you are consistently violating boundaries, every night, every weekend, you are coming to his house, all kinds of things. No. Your chances of getting married are being slashed down seriously. Number two, number two danger sign excessive involvement of third parties in your relationship this is very important there are many of us the number of counselors and senators and members of the house of assembly in your relationship are too much too much you have a senate that decides on everything you want to cook for the guy upper house lower house must decide two of you cannot flog out issues this is what is killing many relationships. Hallelujah. There is too much involvement of third parties. Let me tell you something. God is my witness. And for years we've been doing this. Once we pray for people and bless their relationships, you can ask Pastor Jakes, we stay out. Are you listening to me? We don't come and say, oh, we're leaders over you and we're just critic. No, we stay out. We only come in if you invite us. Or where we see that guy, there is a need. Are you listening to me? Listen. If your friend enters a relationship, please stay out. What I mean stay out is define boundaries. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Some of you are too involved in the relationship of your friends and loved ones. We don't even know whether it's the friends that are in relationship or you are the one. You are too involved. You can veto things on behalf of your friend that is in a relationship. It's their business. Leave them alone. Please. Go and pray and wait for your own. Leave them alone. Excessive involvement of third parties. Once you start allowing too many people to come into you, they will confuse you. They will make you to make wrong decisions. At the end of it, that relationship will not work. Danger sign number two. Danger sign number three. When you find yourself, this is important. When you are consistently quarreling and manifesting rage over trivial issues, just know that that relationship has entered the beginning of the end. Look up, please. Look up. When Zuera's food suddenly stops being sweet, promise. Food that you used to eat every day, you were lean like you would die. When you entered the relationship, it improved on you. Now you can see Zuera's food is not sweet again. Her hairstyle is not nice again. Are you following me now? Her text messages are not. Once you find yourself edgy over trivial things, your heart has left that relationship. Is someone learning something in this place? Quarreling over trivial issues. Do you know why? There is a scripture, we will not read it. But the Bible says, 1 Peter 4 verse 8. It says, I believe 1 Peter 4 verse 8, if I'm not mistaken. Love covers a multitude of wrongs. Look at me. When you love someone, you will give excuses for the person. Is that true? Yeah, danger sign. I like the red. Media, God bless you. Red. Danger sign. Quarreling and manifesting rage. You see a guy just comes. This is a lady that before, she's your queen. Eh? Transpose, let me sing a song. By two or three keys. You are the reason I'm here. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. That's the song you sang. Oh, don't forget. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. Smile. And the lady is just smiling. Now, listen. Suddenly, I've got my mind made up. addressing that attracted you to her suddenly becomes insulting. Everything. Everything. Once you find that kind of quarrel, please, let me tell you something. If you are not ready to marry her, leave her alone. Somebody else will like her. Don't put any lady under your care and frustrate her. Are you listening to me? Sisters, I must tell you this. Danger sign that your relationship will not last. If the guy you are going out with does not have anybody he listens to, are you listening to me? Don't ever go out with anybody that cannot listen to people. He will kill you. One day he will beat you, stand on you and be stamping you and you will die there and nobody will know. There are some of us, you are going out with guys nobody knows. They don't listen to anybody. Nobody can talk to them. Pastor Jake says, oh, I want to see him. He said, no, please, leave me. That kind of thing will not help you. Hallelujah. When you see these three things, three things happen. Your relationship is nose diving. You need counseling and you need help fast. I've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad some of them old enough to be my parents and I've discovered that intrinsically every man is good their approach was wrong and so their life became a script playing out some of you are looking at me now brothers as sincere as you are you are about to replay the same script if you don't change you will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire let me tell you there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her are you hearing me nobody 
a, I'm a man, I've been a man all my life. I'm not just being a man now. So you have to listen to me. I know exactly men are not bad people. But there are concepts that have turned men into beasts. Are we together? A God-fearing person. The word of God. I always give this analogy when I'm counseling people. Listen. If wife come. If watch this. This is my wife. And I want the television to be here. Everybody look up. This is a television now. I want the TV to be here. And my wife says, my husband, this TV has to be there. There is a conflict of ideas. Now, to be God-fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness, or at least I, to say, what does the word of God say about TV? Is the word of God says there should be no TV. What happens to my will? I fold my will to let the will of God prevail. There is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of God. The problem is usually the will of the man. And I look at her and say, what part of your dowry didn't I pay? You talk to me, I will slap you. Forget that I'm a man of God. I'm a man, it's just that I'm of God. You talk to me, I will slap you. Are we together? And you know, men, we are very arrogant people. We can be entering hellfire and claim that it's AC. We are, and drag people in trouble until we get in there. And then we say, well, I, I did not exactly understand. The configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect. That's why submitting to the ways of God is very hard. That's why in most crusades, women are more. The men don't come. They would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle. But to come and be healed, they feel it's an insult. I am a director of A and B and C. But tonight I pray that God will raise men who can submit. I love the song the worship team sang. Look, there is nothing as excellent as a man, especially a young man who has submitted to the will of God in every matter it doesn't matter how it stings my ego once the word of God contradicts my concept I bend I don't look for an explanation no sir it is being God fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife you are angry but what did the Bible say about wives it said treat them as unto weaker vessels so when you slap your wife and you are boiling, you are not just a stupid man. You are not submitting to the ways of God. When you love your wife just because she made a nice hair. And say, hey, hey, now you are talking. You are, you are carnal, number one. That is not even true love. Because the Bible says husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. So the thing is to study how Christ loved the church. He said, while we were yet sinners, undeserving, unqualified, in due season, Christ loved us so when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well i'm not against good dressing i'm not against looking well i'm not against all of these things but if you force your your wife to have to succumb to those things the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is the fear of the lord Many men do not fear God. Principles of parenting. Do you know that there are families and there are cultures, for instance, that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her, she will know that this is not a stupid, it's not a sissy. I mean, it's, it's a show of masculinity. I senior you in age, in strength, in whatever it is, in salary. And you joke with me, I beat you once, then I ask you for forgiveness. I'm forgiving you, you are forgiving me, but the memory of what happened will keep you in place. That has worked for a lot of people, but I hate it. Not, I don't care whether it works or not. It's not consistent with the word of God. The word of God is not about what works or not. It's about what God says. If I apply the word of God and it does not work, I will still remain there. Not because of the result it produces, but because that's what came out of the mouth of God. That's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word. Sisters, are you listening? Unfortunately, now, 
we we live in a generation where and please don't don't find this insulting many of our sisters some of you are here looking at me now you are so gullible just anybody just comes wherever he has small money small whatever you are praying in tongues yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions i am shocked when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say i like him i want to say where did you keep your brain i taught you so many things look at the kind of person you are dragging completely antichrist in his approach why do you love him he loves me is he a christian i uh, he's a nice he comes around listen let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is god and your wife and children you are supposed to change your cloth after some time you are permitted as lovely as this cloth i'm wearing is after a few months it will fade and i'll throw it away and sew another one so it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it but the bible says you are staying with that woman so there's no you can't change her like a cloth meaning you must find out from god what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh if you change clothes change phone change car and yet the bible says you cannot change your wife you must find out lord and the woman is growing old so it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful I told you tonight my heart is, is indicting a good matter we are just warming the plane we must reach that altitude this night in the name of jesus christ yes. god fearing sisters i want you to bond this revelation the first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought hello say hi hello because some of you if we don't press you like this you know i've discovered in church that many people don't listen as you are talking like this they are looking at you they are even writing but their hearts are already made up no sir i'm saving you trouble you will thank me for it not everything that glitters is gold and don't let anyone pressure you whether parents or friend and say after all what is there he can take care of us what is your idea of care buy you things are we together a god-fearing man a man he doesn't have to be a pastor uh -uh. god-fearing has nothing to do with a pastor god-fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours a man can pray eight hours and not be god-fearing I told you there is a difference between believing God and having a reverence for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word. Submitting to the authority of the word. So you may be Igbo, you may be Hausa, you may be Yoruba, you may be Kaduna State, whatever, Northern and you may be from another nation of the world. It does not matter. The issue of this is how we do it in our place. This is how it is in our place. Our fathers used to, our this used to happen. No, no, no. People do those kinds of nonsense things. Do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of God has brought trouble between people? It's the reason why many marriages are not working. Parenting. So the man has his idea on how to raise children. He got it from his friends. He got it from bad people. Are we together now? Do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents? He just lived with them. It's one thing to live with me, but it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me. That you are going around in my house does not mean I'm training you. The Bible said train up a child. It didn't say live with him. Many people are living with their children, but they are not training their children. So their children get the training from their friends. Bad books. Bad magazines rubbish films nonsense photos and pictures and by the time that child is 10 or 11 years somebody else is training him how does a train move they are connected the train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it 
you don't ask a child to buy you cigarette and then as he drops he says if I catch you with cigarette I will kill you by myself I've told you smoking is very bad forget that I'm doing it you are not training the child is God speaking to us what I'm saying is a very serious thing God fearing number two ladies the second thing that you must in this order in this order it has to be in this order the second thing is that that man must submit to an earthly authority I'm giving you redefined 21st century world compliant he must be able to submit to an earthly authority for mentorship for building for correction there are many families in trouble today because there is no authority figure over the life of the husband there's no man that can call him and say no no what you are doing is wrong he can beat the wife and almost kill her he's the god of himself never marry a man who does not have a pastor a mentor a spiritual authority an elderly person there must be a personality that he has covenanted to listen to the person say amen, amen. very powerful revelation i give you there are many ladies who say ah you're in a relationship i think you should see a pause i see a puzzle for what 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 should i see him for that's how after he slaps you and you say let's go and see a pause we say for what listen no matter how wrong a man and a woman is if there is someone for them to listen you are still safe you are still safe i've had the privilege of talking with a lot of couples i remember one couple they fought in kaduna it was a brutal fight police had to come police for husband and wife and to, and, and they are christians the woman just took she could not take it that day and she decided that look i will try my best whatever i would i will have to attempt this man today true story and two of them after the door settled the police people told them look you are married people don't make a fool out of yourself go and you can you know know how to fix things up two of them agreed that they were going to report themselves to me so they reported themselves and then they came for counseling do you know at the end of that counseling simply because they were people who understood submission at the end of it the man was hugging his wife as if he never slapped her nice people and as far as i know things are working it was a very minor issue and all of that sisters please hear me in the name of jesus the 21st century has changed things some of us this is the dilemma that our fathers came in they had been beating our mothers for many years there are some of us if there was an authority figure the divorce would not have happened there was no one the man decides he's the god of the family the day he decides to descend upon the family with wrath everybody's in trouble sisters the man must be able to show you clearly what authority figure is in his life do you know why let me tell you this emeka come sweetheart come assuming stand here assuming this lady Emeka comes to ask this lady out and says he wants to marry her. Do you know if she tells him and says, okay, whatever it is, this is an authority figure in my life and I would like you to see him. Do you know why the man will run away? Because he doesn't plan to be faithful and he doesn't want anything that will tie him too much. He wants an opportunity to still be doing runs at the side. Hello? Are we together? So he's hoping that by alienating himself, there are many brothers who claim to love you people. They come and drop you for koinonia and go away. And after the grace, they now come and pick you. That's dangerous. Naomi told Ruth, he said, um, um, Ruth told Naomi, he says, my God will be your God. Your people will be my people. Are we together? Because if I know this guy with this lady, tomorrow if I see her smiling at somebody, I have the right to ask a question and say, ah, I hope that guy is your brother. <laughs> that smile is too generous for just an ordinary this thing. So what is the issue? And if there is an issue, I will at least try to find out. It's all right if the issues are irreconcilable, but at least that there is some level. There is disorder in the body of Christ because everybody is doing anything. That's why you can find one brother 
with 20 girlfriends scattered all around and they never know themselves. Yet the brother can be leading worship. Yet the brother can be a pastor in charge of A and B and C. He will tell this one, I'll marry. just be waiting. You will just, let me just put things in place. While he's doing that, he's already printing um, traditional wedding card. How many ladies have been heartbroken? A brother that has told them, he has even met their parents. While they are happy, the next thing they just see a wedding card. This is to notify you that the family of A and B is marrying C and D in, in different places very careless and we make the church look stupid let me tell you there's order in the body of christ many people will hear what i'm saying and think no disorderliness will always empower satan disorderliness of any sort will always empower satan the bible says let all things be done decently and in order bless you bless you number three very quickly are you getting blessed so sisters the first thing you should look at in a man and if you are married and your husband doesn't have this begin to labor in the place of prayer labor generously in the place of prayer lord turn the heart of this man he must be god fearing i've married the deed has been done but lord you can still step in you are the god of the second chance step in i will never allow my daughter to marry anybody that is not god fearing bring a jeep bring a plane carry hamper for me that, that all that one is your cup of tea if you are not god fearing the first question i'll ask you is not what you studied or where you have a job are you right with god and you know that you'll not just tell me yes i said that's all right let's go to the next question no 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 no. we'll stay there and press it right with god means what yeah right with god means what you don't just say i'm right with god are, are you a member of what i remember of living faith okay that's all right no no I can in five minutes through your words I can know you are just a church goer you don't fear God yeah. let's restore the fear of God so that our children will be raised you send children to school you have finished training your children in the fear of God they now go and meet a very indisciplined child who came from a family that does not fear God and start making your child who fears God feel like an inferior person is that not what happened to some of us growing you left good Christian families the day they were talking about pornographic movies you've never known anything like that and you say I don't know anything they say are you joking you are 14 years you've never watched this and they make you feel guilty for loving God and it's that guilt that drives you say no I have to educate my mind and look at what has happened to your life now you are God alone from before time began you are on your throne you are God alone and right now through the good times and bad you are on your throne you are God alone be determined to correct the mistakes of your parents with your life you have insulted your father you have insulted your mother it's now your chance oh apostle I want to marry this year congratulations but you listen carefully do you know some people if not for this teaching you are about to make a blunder this valentine because they always come around this time wolves in sheep's clothing they stroll around and they come and look for good church ladies well cultured Christian girls who they can play with their mind because of the innocence of the world there are many ladies if it's not a church girl her eye has opened when the guy does nonsense she will jack him and say we'll die here i'm not a stupid person i will show you that although i'm a lady but a nice well cultured church girl has been trained to respect men has been trained to behave well many bad boys like church girls because they avoid trouble they, they the pastor has done the work so i can easily manipulate them into nonsense and the guy will use the scripture and say don't shout at me remember what apostle said he said it's true apostle said we should be nice they always look for these periods and come and destroy the life of ladies it pains me when i see very nice ladies and their entire life has been crushed and crumbled by very bad boys because they are sincere they are innocent and you know why we pastors don't teach it because we think it's not necessary so we allow people to make all their mistakes and destroy their lives and destinies i get text messages literally every day 
one trouble after another in a family. Please, ladies, listen to me very carefully. God-fearing, submission to an earthly authority. I have seen how beautiful many homes have become. Not necessarily because the men are so godly, but the power of submission. The Lord has revealed things to me about certain families and I've called the husbands to say, Husband, would you want to adjust A and B and C? I think you are doing this to your wife. I think you are doing this to your children. Oh, apostle, I didn't know it was this way. All right. Direction. Number three. Sister, you are praying or considering a man to marry or you are married. That man must have passion for you, not love. Passion. Passion is an adjective that qualifies the extent of love. I love you is not a language that is useful again in this generation because it has been abused. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? One tout can be somewhere holding his symbol and as you are passing, he says, Sister, I love you. So people don't even know what I love you means again. I love you means something carnal and fleshly passion. Please look at me. Let me tell you. Any man who does not have passion for you will be unfaithful. Write it down. Write it down and put my name under. Don't, don't post anything and put my name, but write it down for your consumption. Any man with no passion for his wife, I give you an ironclad guarantee he will be unfaithful. It's not if, it's when. Do you know, let me tell you a shocking truth. Do you know that over 75 to 80 percent of men, even in Christian families, married men, within the first five years of their marriage, have been unfaithful to their wives? Statistically confirmed. I told you it's not because they are bad. Passion. It is passion. Passion is more than physical stature and, and what and all of these things. Are we together now? Yeah. So, that's why I hate arranging marriage. I'm saying it again. You know it. I've told you. Arra marriage that from nowhere you are just standing and they come and say, here is the lady. It's okay. You can suggest, you can recommend and people can pray. But where you just ag agree and the day the person is appearing is the day ring is entering your hand. Hey, hey, hey. You are in big, 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 big trouble because the man is only marrying a wife, not a friend. It is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Any marriage where there is no passion, there must be unfaithfulness. It's not there will be. There must be unfaithfulness. A man cannot struggle indefinitely contemplating his love for his wife. He will find an alternative. And what a generation with many alternatives. His secretary is there. If she's not there, the other one is there. If she's not around, another devil is there somewhere in the hotel. If she's not there, a, a receptionist of another place is somewhere. At every given point, there is somebody waiting to destroy your husband. There are certain women, there are spirits that walk in them, only married men. If they see a young man, no matter what you have, it's not their business. But once they see you, you are married. Ah, what a joy. If you complain about your wife, say, ah, what kind of a woman will oppress such a nice man as this? That's right. He's starting. He's starting. That's exactly what the man wants to hear. I'm very serious with what I'm sharing tonight. Passion. When two people come, you know, to introduce themselves, they just come. You see, sometimes they hold hands. It's as if, hey, hey, hey let's marry you. I said, oh God, just calm down. Because these motions are not passion. Passion is not the, the physical exertion. You are all around the lady. That's not passion. Sometimes it's just jealousy and your personality. It's not passion. Passion is the depth of resolve. It's a resolve within you. That through that lady you have gotten satisfaction and fulfillment. No need for another. The Bible puts it excellently. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them. A man who cannot say that to his wife is already a dangerous man. It is true. I know that you may not be the most beautiful lady. Let's tell the truth. I've seen this lady. I know she's beautiful, but you are my wife. You occupy a place that you alone can stay. May God raise men who can speak like that. Not that 
a beautiful lady passes and even the wife is now afraid because she knows who she married she just says honey must we stand outside let's go inside she, she has already known the man said no 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 I have to take fresh air what is all this vulnerability see let me tell you something let me tell you a big secret there are four sets of people if you are marrying you have to listen to this thing two times one if you are marrying a man of God we are exposed to people every day people means options are you hearing what I'm saying number two a high profile businessman number three a politician are you hearing what I'm saying now number four a lecturer anybody in the academia if you are married to any of these four people listen with both ears and add your spirit in it because he is exposed as I'm standing here preaching there are all kinds of pretty ladies you are not seeing me but I'm seeing you are we together Say amen. amen. So, when you are not careful, you will be surprised that your husband has four children. You never knew. One day, somebody just knocks your house and says, I must look for my father. You say, what is going on here? Spiritual father? And you see a carbon copy of your child. Look, look, look. Don't think I'm just talking. There are many children scattered around. They belong to your family. It's just that you don't know. The day Jesus will come, let's just leave him to be the judge. Amen. Please let me have our attention. Very serious issues. Have you not seen families? Some of you come from those families. After 20 years, one day they'll call a meeting and say, honestly, well, there, are, there are so many there are complications around. You don't know who is your real mother. You don't know who is your real father. You really don't know how many you are in your family. You just know what they told you. As you grow, you keep learning more. You thought you were seven. Now you have discovered you are ten. And eventually, the children will say they are coming. When the father now dies, that's when you know there's trouble. Because the family with the legitimate wife are all girls. And the ones they gave birth to somewhere are boys. The moment the father dies, they now show up and say, no way, our father is our father. And in our culture, women don't inherit anything. Therefore, they displace people. I've counseled cases like that. Are we together? Very important. Passion. Please, my brother, if you find out it is okay, listen, it is very okay to see a lady and just be fond of her. The mystery of attraction is when you find a lady or a person or an object demonstrating many things you perceive to represent value to you. So if beauty represents value, it's impossible to see a pretty girl and pretend it's not being spiritual. Look, look very well. This ask you why I say because I'm a Christian. You are not lying. So looking, it's not all those fake things to pretend you a pretty lady passes there. Yeah, I didn't see any. No, you saw. You saw. It's just that you have self-control. Are we together? Passion. You must have passion. You must have passion. Many people don't have passion. The lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal, to have children. They've been pressuring you. Promise, you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you marry an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out. He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. 
there is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ brothers let me encourage you please be careful and, and, and sisters too have not come to brothers yet I'm talking about sisters but it's a quality for brothers passion whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady it's not enough reason to go and ask them out that's lack of self-control are we together it is okay that I look at this lady and I'm attracted to her it's okay but self-control that's what they say in the multitude of many counsel there is safety some the moment you see a lady and she's fine day and then even if it's during a prayer session in the heat of prayer say please can you see me after after prayer discipline hallelujah the next moment that's your first time you are even new in the prayer they have not even confirmed you you are not a member of the prayer department you are just arriving that day you say sister honestly where where do your parents stay let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself you are a very indisciplined brother because you come into a place with structure and authority and you just come in and do anything you want to do and sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play around those kind of things discipline let people come and meet order in your life then they are forced to respect that order are we together now Jesus is helping us today somebody somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying it's very important are we together now passion if you are married here you must pray consistently brothers fathers to keep having passion for your wife not just your children because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married and you can see and say ah Jimmy is married let's leave him no no you can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me like, daddy how are you that daddy is, is, is he just means I'm available gone are the days you can see a man at my father's age see a small girl and say ah uh-uh, my daughter how are you 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 would think he's fatherly my daughter but it's, it's, it's not fatherly my daughter at all. It's another dimension on its own. So that you are married. You know sometimes many men deceive themselves. They just think the moment you are married. It just means people will leave you alone. Just because you are married. No. Our society it should be like that. But our society has become so depraved. That a ring is just a jewelry. A ring is just a jewelry for entertainment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's something that symbolizes a covenant relationship is it's entertainment. So when you wear a ring and say, if they see a ring, they'll mind themselves. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Where to? It won't change anything. Thank you, my dear. Love and passion. Love and passion. And then the last key. Ladies, I will dwell a bit here today. Never marry a man who is irresponsible. That's the last point. There must be a demonstration of responsibility. 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 Many brothers are irresponsible. Christian brothers inclusive. Irresponsible. Tongue-talking Christian brothers. What does it mean to be responsible? To be responsible means... It means to be aware of the cost dimension of life. Taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life. I don't mean money. That anything to be done must be done by someone. The Bible says every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. An irresponsible person says, uh-uh, they have not done it. A responsible person says, can we do it? Are you seeing that now? Let me tell you something. Please look up. There is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria, especially to Nigerian young men. Please listen. If you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered 
and that's why they are irresponsible today. Over pampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still over pamper a man. Let me tell you how they over pampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes, you say, Ah, uh-uh, is there not house help? Wash for him because we have washing machine in our house. A young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible. Are we together now? He goes out and by four o'clock you are ringing his phone. Return home. Return home. It looks like you are trying to be disciplinary. There is an age range where he needs to be home. But there is an age range where that guy is submissive. Maybe he's in church as a choir director. And you are now calling a mature boy of 19 years old. It's five o'clock. Where are you? Come home. So the guy is now 25 and he stays home. He married with his wife and stays home just like mommy said. Obedient child. Nobody goes out to get food again because he has been trained. Come home. In America from 12 years, 12 years old in America, you see children looking for something to do. Post office. Ah, there, there's no chair for us. They always expect to be recipients, not contributors. It's not your fault. That's why I'm helping you tonight. Many brothers are like that. They are born again. They love God. But anything that discomforts them a little, uh uh-uh, they don't want it. It's irresponsibility that produces laziness. Laziness. Get up and do something. You have a meeting for five o'clock. It's raining heavily. I say, Kai, oh, quarter to five, please. Uh, Benga, I can't make it for the meeting. Kai, I'm tired. This rain, the cold is too much. That's a lazy man who will not feed his family. You see that? He will not feed his family because he will say there's crisis in Nigeria. They can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die. The Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not reap. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting. You see somebody from 1996, no job. It's the wife that works, pays the children's school fees and the man is alive. Two hands, two legs. He gets up in the morning, sits at the veranda of the house. They are playing draft together with other colleagues, irresponsible men who come. They form a team and they just play. Where's your wife? Uh, you know, she's a nurse. She works in the hospital. You know, women, she will come in the evening. The woman will return. There is no food. She will come and be cooking. And the, the male figure in that family is learning. He doesn't like it, but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seeing. There are too many irresponsible people. There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church. Have you seen people like that? There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money. Am I not your pastor? Buy a car for me. Build a house for me. Marry for me. That's an irresponsible man of God. He's a man of God, but an irresponsible one. responsibility so you must look at it responsibility is not having a car that's not responsibility responsibility is not having a house that's not responsibility that's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake responsibility is not having a car and a house please listen i can have a car and a house by the privilege of access it doesn't mean i'm responsible so stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible eventually it's an index that will show responsibility but responsibility is from the heart the willingness to grow to press the willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life don't say there are two brothers. One has a car. The other one is working on his foot. And so I, let me just go with what I'm seeing now. The moment the car spoils, that's the last car he will ever buy in his life because he never bought the first one in the first place. Many ladies don't know how to trust God for good brothers. We pray in tongues, but we don't know what to expect. And so I'm painting a picture for you right now. Somebody already after koinonia, you answer the guy. You see how God has given you the answer? The answer is no. The answer is no. Immediately after koinonia, you send him a text. Say, please. 
sorry I've delayed you but the answer is no because you are not God fearing you don't submit to any authority and you don't want to he may not know but is he willing to now that he knows are we together now yeah number three do you love me passionately no you passworded your phone passworded your text passworded your laptop passworded a call is coming you just run outside you save the name of a lady John you save the name of the other lady Andrew because you turn the head of people to be stupid Andrew why are you calling me it's a coded language you are not serious hallelujah and finally the man is not responsible the average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. It's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the firstborn. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's all right. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can give me, thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing, too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female. God fearing, exact same definitions as with the man, nothing changing, gender irrespective. The same God fearing, God fearing, meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God, many ladies don't respect God, they respect themselves, they respect society. They respect every other thing but God. There are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls, even if they are in church. They are happy when they look and say, You're a bad girl. They, they smile. That we go do. If you are a bad girl, it's a very bad, it's not a good comment. You know, many ladies feel guilty. Listen, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. Many sisters, innocent church sisters, they feel guilty. Listen, they feel guilty for being innocent. You know, society makes it look like your eye has not opened. You've not been sleeping around. You've never drank in your life. Uh -uh. You don't have a boyfriend. You are 20 years. Uh -uh. You mean this is this? This is how your life is? And they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent. They look and say, she's a small girl. She's just growing old. Come to us. We, we, we have our legs. Are, you, see, you are happy for being bad. It's a different thing if it's your past. Jesus has helped you now. Or at least will help you this night. Are we together? God-fearing. A woman who is not God-fearing will have a husband and her sponsor. That's how she will marry. There is a husband and a sponsor. What is the sponsor for rainy days? What's the husband for? Every other thing. So once the going gets tough, she calls. Do you know how many women, married women, still call those who were their ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or ex-sugar uh, son or ex-whatever it is and call the person after many years? A woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere. How are you reporting her husband to the small boy? And the small boy said, How will we do now? He said, Can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree? Just the, the way we used to meet before. You are married. The, the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships, even in her marital home. I will say it all. My name is Joshua Selman. The average lady still has affiliations. I tell you this. You know I'm not lying. Some of you as you are looking at me, you know it's true. 
although you may be married but you still call John and it's not just brotherly how are you is the family okay no John I need help you have to help me this is my husband you know he's a stupid man John I say, as it is always you, you know we know ourselves I say no problem John can you do the transfer now praise God that's why they are not faithful that's why they are not desperate to change their husbands when they come for prayer meetings like this and they say if your husband is not doing well pray they are not praying they know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested so they rather just other people pray and you see the woman just praying just looking around because whatever happens there is a well you don't say concubine for a man do you There's somebody somewhere an affiliate <laughs> Who they are waiting for. Number two, brothers, what should you look at in a woman? A woman who is submissive to the man at all times. Submissive to the man on the line at all times. I don't have a problem with submission, but when? At all times, convenient or not. Submission has never been a choice. Write it down. That's your own part. Oh, apostle, you don't know how foolish my husband is. Don't worry, I'm coming. I've not finished. For now, just know your own role. Submit. Submission is a difficult thing. Listen, ladies, look at me. Let me tell you a big secret. Submission is a risk. It's a risk. You don't know the man too well, no matter how long you have been going out. Submission is a risk. When you marry, you will discover many other things you never knew. Submission is by faith and it's a risk. It's a risk. You've not seen what the man can do when he has money. You've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money. You've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure. You've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a CEO. Yet the Bible says submit. Submission is a risk. You need the Holy Spirit to do it. That's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by God. Hallelujah. You must submit to the man at all times. When ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible did not say submit to man enough men. Apostle is not, he's not providing anything. I'm the one bringing the money. I'm the one paying the school fees. I'm not stupid. I know. Be word compliant. You are, can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him. Hey, you are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says. That's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship, you should thank God. All this rush, I want to enter a relationship. My blood is hot. You will thank God now for this message because the relationship you would have entered would be the beginning of disaster no guidance submit to the man at all times and it starts from the relationship it's not when you get married no it starts from the relationship i know submission is not foolishness but the bible instructs it you see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say, no, 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 no. 
wife is doing her part well and because the man submits to authority he will listen if his deliverance they will cast the demon out if he's counseling they will manage his pressures at the moment but where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God does not submit to authority you are in trouble big trouble what is number three let's hurry up what kind of woman should you marry brother a woman who is sacrificial and hospitable third point sacrificial and hospitable in the 21st century you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice you have married disaster there are many ladies who like who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes no hallelujah the moment the man loses his job the wife changes she can't love him again there are many people like counsel and it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well oh he just bought a house he just got promotion my husband my husband they just blackmailed him oh they said ah this and that happened and they demoted him she won't refuse but you see the body language honey why now you know i don't like plantain please don't disturb me in this house when you bring money we cook well subliminal statements you have started communicating it's a terrible thing please hear what i'm saying the lord is speaking very seriously never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money the bible never does that the bible never instructs that so choose whether you want to marry or not thank god marriage is not compulsory but if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit, in a habit of sitting with groups they travel to this state there is a group and they sit down and lambast their husbands they talk all kinds of nonsense reveal family secrets bedroom secrets are, that are not for the consumption of the public and when they finish they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men they will not your man your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady he has apologized a man of god came in they managed the situation it's only you and the pastor who has managed the situation you now carried your mouth you have run it from east to west from uk to london everybody knows your husband once had a challenge and one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret the person will go and publish something in 1971 you see them do it in america when god is about to bless somebody somebody will just come crying on tv and say look i remember what you did to me these are that because we don't keep quiet the bible says it, even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise the bible tells every woman to cover her head there is a dimension of physical covering but there is a dimension of spiritual covering cover your head the head over your life protect him protect him he's vulnerable protect him are you getting blessed sacrificial listen no matter how rich you are no matter how blessed you are a time must come in your relationship and your marriage when you will need sacrifice is that true sacrifice there may be times when god can give an instruction promise so that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment i don't teach irresponsibility but there are times god will give that instruction and for those times it will require sacrifice there are times because you want a good education of your child you will constrain certain things please we cannot go to london on vacation one day we will go but for now we cannot go let us use that money to train our children but there are many women they won't hear other women are going even those who are your genius in office but we we are here now unhealthy comparison hospitality i don't want to talk about that sadly there are ladies who are not hospitable at all 
You will buy bonds together with a friend. You are just with the friend. You will eat the bonds. Eat the second one. Eat the third one. Squeeze the leather and try. Say, guy, this bond self is not very sweet. You will never give it. Even to say, please take. You give them once. If they say no, you refuse. Because you never meant to give it. Stingy attitudes. And that kind of thing translates in a home. Visitors will come to your house and sit down for hours. They are discussing critical issues with your husband. There are even women, men of God, who come to their house and they won't do anything. When the man is about going, he says, ah, when we are warming rice, please, I stayed in your house for two hours. Warming with rice. Even if you are cooking it, it will be done by then. <laughs> Ladies, listen, listen, listen. Please don't laugh. It's a serious thing. It starts from your attitude in the hostel. Your pot is your own. Your corner is your own. Your everything is your own. Your shoe is your own. Your water is your own. Your Bible is your own. Your bed sheet is your own. That's how everything will be your own. Even when you get married, you will demarcate it. Husband, this section of the house is for me. This one is for you. This one is for the children. There are many people who cannot give. They like taking, but they cannot give. Me ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body, he will keep buying for me. Oh, because to buy 200 naira recharge card, he said, What will I do? He's already rich. That's he's the one that asked me out. I didn't ask him all that, those stupid Nigerian film type wise sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives. No, sir, sacrifice. Say, sacrifice. You must learn to sacrifice. Many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial. They feel cheap being sacrificial. We have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice. So they come to a guy and honestly speaking, all this guy has is a small room and all of this, but God is helping him. And no, 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 no. That attitude of sacrifice is not there. I want tomorrow now. Now, I want tomorrow now. They say we should do this, this and that. I need 90,000 from you. And the brother says, look, honestly, I don't have anything now. You know it. I mean, you can take my ATM. You won't hate him, but your body language. There are many relationships I've counseled. The moment the guy does not have money, he's in trouble. You will see the language of the lady. One month before, he gave her 10,000. As if it's your father. You called your physical father. He said he won't give you anything. You now call somebody you are going out with and you want to swallow him only 2000 okay i'm grateful you are saying you are grateful but your body language for that remaining one month kai is being shameless it's not good training hallelujah you come into the life of a man you did not contribute anything yet just because he loves you you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his atm and control his destiny the only person permitted to occupy that position is jesus are we together? Yeah. There are many brothers suffering under the hands of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient. You don't eat tomorrow today. Are you getting blessed? Brothers, the last thing is now the physical factor. Are you seeing that is now I even brought the physical factor? It must be in that order. That's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at. She beautiful, is she all of these things? L listen, as I have known God more, truly let me tell you this. As I have known God more, and as I have received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have walked in this life, I found out that all these physical things they are important, but sincerely, let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart, they will fade like a leaf. They will fade and vanish like a leaf. I have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it. If the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I was in Joss when I went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year. I happened to go and visit um, one man, he used to be my principal, and that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and I'll pray for him. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you one truth. Be careful. I'm not saying physical things are not important, but when your 
concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of God are we together now supersedes what's the second one submission to the man supersedes whatever you've heard me say it again you just come and meet a lady there are serious issues maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-christians you know what i mean and she's the only christian she's saying sorry oh this is the family you are going to you didn't settle down to pray you say no problem you are too fine for me to let you go you are in trouble my mother is a witch it's okay i love you like that I, me i'm telling you she's a traditional pra- i know don't, don't worry there's koinonia there's miracle service And people get a lot of casualties. Sorry, man of uh, my brother, I need to tell you something. I was born with some kind of deficiency. Honestly, I'm physically not able to take in. I can't have a child. That's a little bit what is children. The most important thing is love for you. You will now drive yourself and get married. After two years, you want to kill her. As if she didn't tell you. You see it. Please spiritualize spiritualize your process of getting a wife don't be carnal don't sit with brothers and say have you looked at this one what do you what can you say it depends on who you are talking to if you are talking if you are talking to a brother who is not born again you are in trouble he will give you the counsel of Ahitophel and after two years you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade say amen God fearing submissive at all times sacrificial hospitable let me talk about responsibility for a while and then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray write it down first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 please give us first timothy 5 verse 8 quickly brothers i want to talk to you now i want to talk to everybody but specifically to the men we need responsible men in our society First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 is that possible? If that's not possible, I would look for it. Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh-huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then he says, but especially, meaning first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said love your neighbor as yourself. There are people who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches. Whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees. It's an irresponsible life. The Bible says, especially to those of his own house. He said he had denied what? The faith. And is worse than an infidel. Write this down. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Number two, quickly. Responsibility is an awareness of of consequences an awareness of consequences that if you do this there is a consequence if you do not do this there is a consequence responsibility is an awareness of consequence I identified a few reasons here where people are why people are generally not responsible let me talk about them for a few minutes number one the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment. The reason why many brothers, many sisters, but brothers especially, may never get established is indecision. There is a difference between a wish and a decision. I want to eat rice, that's a wish. I want to eat rice. But I will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it. Or I will go to the market to cook it. That's a decision. Backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it. There are many brothers wishing. Wishing through prayer. Wishing through reading books. Wishing through receiving prophecy. Wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service. No. Wishing does not pro- provide 
an answer. Indecision over being successful. Look at me. God is speaking to people here. I preached the first message I preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called come out of your father's house that message blessed people in no small way there are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young I'm, I'm young you know I am 20 I am 30 even 40 you say you are young are we together you must learn to take responsibility over your, your life if anything will be done you will have to contribute in making it happen indecision You've never made a decision to rise up and be serious. You've made a decision to marry. You've made a decision to have children. You've made a decision to fantasize. But you've not made a decision to be diligent. Diligent. And say, no, I'm tired of the way my life is. Lord Jesus, things have to change. Look, let me tell you something. There are brothers listening to me right now and some following online. This night should be your night of decision. Many years ago, I got, I made up my mind that I was going to be a very responsible person. I, it was a vow that I took with God. Are we together? Exactly 14 years ago. In fact, 15 years ago. Exactly 15 years ago. I made that decision. That I was going to be serious and be responsible. The first book I bought was Discovering Your Purpose by Dr. Mike Murdoch, Dr. Miles Munro. And I sat down, when I read that book, I cried. I remember writing it. I still have the book till today. It was a vow that I wrote. I will be a responsible man of God. I will be a, a responsible father. I will be a responsible husband. I will be a responsible leader. Decisions. How do I know you have taken a decision to be successful? When you stop making excuses. Excuses. The language of irresponsible men. I would have done it but it's not my fault. You too you understand. No sir. Stop making excuses. Nigeria is in recession. That's why no. Men who make. Men who are fond of making excuses. Are not responsible men. And that includes women too. Of course. Number two. Admit your mistakes. That's how I know you have decided to succeed. Admit your mistakes. Admit it. Oh, I was careless in this area. I admit. Number three. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Many young Nigerians like this. We blame government. We blame all kinds of things. We blame demons. We blame our father. My father didn't train me well. At my age, look at it's now I'm entering 100 level. It's not the best. But now that you have entered, take responsibility. Take responsibility. There are too many people in anger blaming people. They didn't pay my school fees. The reason why I'm sleeping around for school fees is because I have a stupid father. Okay, I agree. I sympathize with you. But now that you are in Christ, Is God speaking to us tonight? His teaching is becoming hot. Koinonia is quiet. I pray that it's entering your spirit because that's the goal. Stop making excuses. Brother, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You are making the same excuse since you were 15. You are 31 now. Stop making excuses. Your father drove your mother when you were 9 years. Now you are 20. You are 20. 11 years ago. Get over it and move forward. Oh, apostle, I was raped when I was two years. I'm sorry. I feel very bad for you. But the God of heaven has helped. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I know it's very bad and it's disheartening. But get over it and move forward. In fact, we don't even have too much of that in Africa. It's down the west you find irresponsible people. A 70 year old man will come out and say the reason why he was, he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him. And they'll send a counselor 70 years. He, he abused you. When, how old were you? I was five. For 65 years, you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver. And now you are blaming your father going to stand in his graveyard. Dad, I know you're dead. 
But this and that and that trouble, stories. All this drama and gimmicks. Oh no. Take responsibility. Stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years? That's a wasted life. Indecision. Have you made a decision that you will succeed? Brothers, look at me. Have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority? Don't say amen. Have you made a decision? Have you made a decision that your wife will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months? Madam Shift, one small boy somewhere is pushing your wife. Have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV, we were classmates? Have you made a decision? Many of us have not. We have been wishing, but we have never made a decision. Tonight, make it in Koinonia. Are we together? Make that decision. Make that decision. When you make a decision to be successful, you will stop immediately. You stop being a small child. The concept of small child is not by age. The moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused. That's why people are free. 10 o'clock, you see them moving around. Drinking sugar cane on the road. Eating carrots on the road. Just moving around. And they say, ah, bros. I don't know. And say, you are free. Are you, are you free? Say, yes. Where are you going? Man, I got one movie. There's one new computer game. That's a man who has not made a decision to be successful. Because when you make that decision, your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime. You will be too busy. You have to even receive grace from God to think about marriage. Many people are not purpose driven. By 9 o'clock, you've slept. You wake up by 6 because you are free. You still sleep back. Wake up by 12. You wake up, you are still free. You still sleep back. You spend from 4 to 5 making calls, disturbing visionary people. How are you? It's been a while. Say, sorry, I'm walking. Why are you treating me like this? Is it because I don't have money? Let's talk, Jerry. And the person is saying, I'm busy. And you call it pride. May you be too busy for your enemies to distract you. May you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping, talking nonsense. There are many of us, our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything. Because you are not working. You don't do anything. People will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house. Your, your house is the meeting place. Everybody talks about their marriage. They talk about their children. They talk about everything. You are the recipient. No. Be too busy. Be too busy. Are we together? Somebody wants to come and gossip. As he's coming close to your house, he sees that you are busy. There are so many things happening. Many brothers are too idle. They are too idle. Call them in the night, they are snoring. Call them in the morning, they are snoring. You're not going to make a great life that way. Look, I will tell you the truth because I love you. That's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees. Huh? Could not pay our school fees. There are fathers today. There are many people seated here. It's not your parents that are paying your school fees. And they are alive. And they are doing well. You come and meet them and say, Daddy, I need school fees. They say, are you stupid? What should I do? He said, I don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Automatically, what they are telling you is, are you not a lady? Go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees. Do you know how I know many parents are irresponsible? Now, let me say this. And I say it with all honor to God for the privilege of being able to help people. Out of all the people I have paid their school fees and paid the school fees, less than 2%, less than 2% of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees. There are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, come on, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. 
There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old. They cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even, do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money is becoming scary. As I counsel people, I'm being afraid. Honestly, I'll tell you this. There are many people, I tell you, their parents are not responsible for their lives. A daughter in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning. She's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, "Uh uh-uh, you are enjoying, no? Just leave her own for us. You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11.30 in the night. 11.30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Say, ah, ah, my God, look at this guy. Welcome. She enters with a new dressing that already shows hellfire. And yet, you, you please see, this thing I'm saying, I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think he's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. This is the carelessness that is happening in society. Do you know, to the point that if you bless a lady and give her 5,000, she will be looking at you and smiling. It's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal. What other side? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because nobody helps for nothing. We live in a society where nobody helps for nothing. If I give you 10,000 naira, you know what to do tomorrow. See, listen, let me encourage you. I don't condemn you, but if there is any man in your life, please listen to me. Listen to me. Who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man, stop it this night. In the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Say it. Amen. Send them text messages. Whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judges, send him a text message after Koinonia and say, no weekend again, sir. He said, why? Say, a man of God I love so much has spoken. Oh, I will double what I'm giving you. That's not the issue. Are we together? It's very important. It's very disheartening. Please, if you're a parent here and you are listening to me, I'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters. Ladies, please don't get it personal. But someone has got to talk to them. It's it's too too much. It's too careless. It's too much. A daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy. 250,000 naira phone. A laptop. Whatever it is. And nobody can ask a question. Nobody. Of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life. You never contributed in making it happen. So is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from? It's a terrible thing. See, when you see me close to my ladies in Koinonia here, it's for a reason. Many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life. Literally. The moment they are hungry, 
they know they must sleep with somebody so for them they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life genuinely okay parents we need we have work to do many of our parents have really failed us it's very important but then we must take responsibility please sisters you are going to vow in the name of the Lord today it's better for them to drive you away from school than you should do you know how many people you catch HIV today do you think the man who gave you the HIV there are many people who move around you are seeing it looks like they are healthy they, 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 aside from the spirit in them spiritually speaking curses yokes spells on their head they land everything on your destiny you are too small for that kind of that kind of thing there are people who you see them young and small but the things they have gone through they can sell you and bring the change they look at you as if they don't know anything The Lord will help us. The Lord will seriously help us. Valentine is coming again. An opportunity for destroyers to emerge. From tomorrow, they are selling cakes now, selling balloon, selling letters, selling all kinds of things. They will come roaming around like wolves, about to eat up the destinies of people. They leave their wives and their children. Some of them, their parents, some of the people that some of these men are looking for, the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend. Is that true? Yeah. There are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men. We don't do all these small, small boys, no. Us, our own, we deal with Abuja kind. 99 days for the thief. The, the owner is not your husband, the owner is Jesus. The day the owner will come and say, look, I'm fed up with your life. You'll be in trouble. Men will go and catch HIV and come and give their wives. Women will catch HIV and give their husbands and kill themselves. I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV and left two of them taking care of themselves i asked the lady how have you been paying your school fees she said i do tailoring i laughed i said i'm not a small child how have you been paying your school fees answer me hey, what is you do tailoring how much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes and that's when she shocked me and said she has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor <laughs> nothing goes for nothing this is nigeria you can't you can't eat your cake and have it I live to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow brings hallelujah we are going to pray Proverbs 21 verse 20 I want to cast a spirit among men tonight it's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities. Wasted relationships. i like us to read it. It's projected. One to read. An oil in the dwelling of the wise. Uh-huh. But a foolish man spended it up. Look at me. You know, when I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is, Apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a typer at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources, wasters of opportunities, living a lie, living a false life. Your salary is 50,000, but you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. You are a waster. 
I told people don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance. Your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20% of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis. Many people go and collect loans from the bank. Instead of them to buy a simple car, they buy different kinds of cars, move around to prove a point. You are earning 20,000. You are buying a material of 50,000. And you wear it and everybody around you does not know. Let me show you how Satan cheats Africans. There are many of us, if you did not have the spirit of a waster, God has been faithful in your life. You would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things. How about marriage? How we waste money in Africa? You get the best venue, hire the best people, you go and get a small boy and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? <laughs> of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering her hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. You are a student, you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around. I have this. No, sir. It's a waster. And we pastors have been victims of this because in an attempt to help people become successful we put pressure on them to prove that the world is working and in an attempt to show that the world is working the money that god gave the guy to help him he now uses it to buy a car as a hundred level student to show that he has faith faith is not foolishness you are in 200 level you are wearing a a a, a weaver of, of twenty thousand. no there are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating. Where a piece of meat, a big piece of meat is 500 naira. See that? And you eat three square meals a day. They give you 10,000 naira in a week you spent. Some of us have a spirit of spending. You can't rest till it finishes. It's a spirit. Waster. Are we together? You are wearing a shoe of this amount. Please, I'm talking to you. You have to square up. There are things in your life you can go and sell. That's your capital. Sell all those nonsense. You have three phones. Who are you calling? You are loading your phone with 10,000 naira in a month. That's somebody's salary. And you, all you are doing is gisting. Rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. You are not doing anything. Your barber comes to meet you. 1,000 naira per baby. Can't you go and kill? What are you rushing for? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people who don't have any money. You are not earning anything. You charter a car to wherever you want to go to. Let me show you how we waste money. 25,000 naira on a trip. Oh, I can't enter night bus. We have to fly. 30,000 naira. Economy is finished. Book business class. 45,000 naira. You are paying, you are flying away your destiny. <laughs> Whereas with 5,000 naira, you can with honor. I'm not saying the days will not come for those things. But not now. Fake life. You see people living. Especially women of God. Fake life. So that I will show that I'm anointed. You go and buy a watch of 100,000. You are wearing it. No, let me tell you. When you rise, everything around you rises. So when you fake it, nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been. You don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence. When Koinonia started here, with crowds of people packed to outside, I will come on a bike. A bike. Miracle service. People are waiting. The next thing you hear sound of a bike, I will drop from it honorably with my Bible. And at that time, I was already blessed. Please, stop any fake life. We know you are responsible and we know God will help you. Brothers, am I speaking to you? This pressure of trying to look like Joshua Selman, you will die, oh, you don't know the fire I've passed through to come where I am. No, no, sir. This pressure of trying to do this. Visitors, if I am coming to your house, if all you have is water, keep it there. Don't go and borrow money to cook Talking, I didn't ask you. God is faithful. 
I'm not coming for food. There are families and women of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when any time they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh, no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader. That you go to anybody's house under the canopy of koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. Some things are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker's salary. Yet before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. Your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere. You've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? Suit, 100,000. There is a particular anko that this group, where is it in the Bible? If you don't have money, everybody should dress well. Just honor them. Will they deny that they are your parents? Must they dress in Anko? Please hear what I'm saying. You know, if eat your size and grow gradually, God will honor you. Honeymoon, you want to travel out to where? If you don't have the money, explain to your wife. Honeymoon is a mentality, not, a, not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Two years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigeria for January to November finishes in three days. Three days of hilarious living. You buy hamper 14,000 per one. You buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church. No, sir. There are brothers here, you have no business buying a laptop. You don't have the money. There are sisters, you have no business buying certain materials. If all you have is one trouser, my brother, iron it with dignity. The God of heaven who sees you will honor you. You are not irresponsible. If you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser, God just saved you from a bad wife. Go away and trust God for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't put pressure on yourself. You enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship, killing you. Book for counseling. Book for counseling fast and say, Apostle, I need help. I entered it. I'm not saying you are bad people. That's what counseling is for. To be able to talk to you and say, No, no, no. I think you are spending too much. People get married and they don't have a house. They get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a waste. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees and the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God and there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? 
God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man, may the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award-winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is nobody, no tree, no matter how well you water and fertilize it, it will not become a giant oak tree in one day, but there's potentials for it. Are you together now? Yeah. There are people some of you admire. If you saw them 10, 20 years ago, you will not like them. But faith... I saw one man of God, when I saw his picture, it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist. You can use measuring tape and tie the waist. His wedding with his wife, she just stood as if they carried that cap, as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head. And the guy, the guy should be a multi-millionaire, if not a billionaire today. He lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow. That's the price of taking the risk with the man. If you are risk averse, you sit down there. Is God helping us? And brothers, be responsible. Don't take for granted that I've told ladies to be, respons to be responsible and you sit down. You are stingy, you are greedy, you are in a relationship, Valentine is coming, you are pretending like you don't know. Plan! You must do something on Tuesday. Plan! Plan! You have today, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday morning. Plan! So that you don't take for granted and say, because some of those things are laziness. Please, we must balance it. Brothers, you must be serious. Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up, spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray, but I want, please, no moving around. No moving around. I want everyone to stand, just, just stand still for a moment. And I want you to think about your life in one minute. Especially for the brothers. I want you to meditate upon your life in one minute. What will your 10 years be from now? What will your 20 years be at the rate you are going with your life? At the rate of your mindset, at the rate at which your understanding is, what kind of results are you producing? Sister, look at your life now and be sincere between you and the God of heaven. The seeds you are sowing now, what kind of harvest do you see in front of you? Now, I want you to lift your voice before the God of heaven. In the next two or three minutes, cry. He says, my help comes from the Lord. Cry, cry, cry. Cry. Please, I want you to cry to God. I've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you. I want you to cry before God in one minute. Lord, I have seen a mindset. I've seen a mindset that is destructive. I need you to help me. I'm a godly brother, but I've seen that I've been irresponsible. I have been lazy. Lazy about my relationship. Lazy about my life. I've been giving flimsy excuses. I take responsibility tonight. Are you praying? I am a 
a lady and have allowed a wrong mindset a materialistic mindset a mindset that is carnal to consume me I ask you for help lift your voice and pray if every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere please lift your voice and cry to the God of God for help Lord, I'm not being responsible as a father. Pray. You're connecting with us online. Pray. I'm not being responsible as a husband to my wife, to my children. I take responsibility tonight. hallelujah prayer point number two father take away every spirit of indiscipline laziness and wastage and irresponsibility let it live my life forever lift your voice and pray laziness mental laziness entitlement mentality waiting for father to do this for me waiting for mother to do this for me flimsy excuses are you praying please pray this is your destiny pray this is your destiny pray this is your destiny Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, break any relationship in my life. Love relationship, wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life. Let them be scattered now. I don't care how long. Any wrong friend, wrong associate, wrong whatever it is. I break it now. Friends that give me wrong counsel. I destroy it now. Shaka paratakata. Shakata prakata liba shiba gamanaraba. I was not a thief until I joined certain people. And they made me to be a thief now. I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals. From those relationships, <laughs> hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three Father, give me direction first over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage, I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family, right now, I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction on what to do as a father financial direction on what stream of income to put your hands on don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything direction on how to go as a pastor direction on my marriage direction on a life partner direction Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point before the last one. You're going to say, Lord, walk in me and walk on me. Anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife, 
anything don't pray for husband yet lord whatever makes me a bad wife whatever makes me a bad husband whatever makes ladies run away from me whatever makes men run away from me i humble myself tonight and i ask that you take it from me walk on me walk on me lift your voice and pray what is driving my husband away from me what is driving my wife away from me is there something i'm doing wrong what is driving my destiny helper away from me what is driving the anointing away from me what is driving favor away from me what is driving breakthrough pray from your heart there must be something i'm doing wrong why does my husband not love me i may be getting it wrong somewhere why does my wife not love me I must be getting it wrong somewhere. Why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow? Something must be wrong. I take responsibility. No passing blames. Hallelujah. Last prayer point and we are done for this night. Listen carefully. We are going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call. There is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about. Maybe tomorrow if God grants us time during the workers retreat, I will explain. It's called the suffering help of God. Listen, listen. Ah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I am a testimony of a man that God has helped. The Bible says and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young man to for a young man to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it is hard. There are no jobs. Every society gets its employment from the private sector. And if the private sector is not robust in any economy, there is no job. I know. The probability of an average young man to be established before 30 in Nigeria now. I tell you the line is very slim. If it's to follow everything justly by God, when will you write jam and finish? Strikes in school before you finish and all the trouble that comes with sentiments and tradition. You need help. Brothers, it's neither by strength nor by power. When I found out that my strength was too small to give me the result, I played my role and ran to God. I, I want to give you the next two minutes. I don't know how you will pray this prayer. But you are going to say, Lord, if you don't help me, I will move forward. Oh, I, I am tired. Please cry, 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 cry. God can help men. Oh, he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry. We are a testimony of men that God has helped. My life today is a testimony of how, a, of how God can help a man cry for his help cry for his help don't pretend you don't need it don't pretend you don't need it in his help there is favor in his help there is protection in his help there is honor in his help there is restoration in his help there is speed there is advancement. Help me, oh God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything, my career. I admit that I need your help. For he is our ever-present help. Ever-present help. Ever-present help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. If you forget anything I've shared tonight, don't forget that God can help men. You will be foolish to imagine he cannot help. My God... The God I serve 
look at my life that God cannot help a ministry look around and bring one coin on your poster that you've seen on the road that God cannot help a people look at the financial records of the millions of naira spent by this ministry dead free completely not owing any man as a ministry dead or alive listen brothers and sisters God can help a man I tell you he can deliver you he can protect you some of us have been trying on our strength we are going to pray that prayer one more time and say Lord I give up my strength I lay down my pride please help me help me to be established I'm getting older and older and at the rate of the way things are going my job cannot establish me my salary cannot establish me my business cannot establish me I need help from heaven standing everyone inside outside and all the people following us online whatever nation you are in it doesn't matter distance is no barrier please listen I want to make a very serious altar call now two in one first and foremost those who are saying man of God have been waiting for this call because I'm about to run to Jesus right now I don't like the way my life is going I need Jesus you don't need counseling for some people you need Jesus there's no level of counseling that will re that will replace lack of the life of God. Don't sit down. This is not an initiation to be a Christian. This is a serious affair with your destiny. Are we together now? The second group of people are those that are saying, Lord, I'm coming before you to truly repent. I'm asking you to help me. I'm asking you to help me with all my heart. You may not be sleeping around. You may not be drinking. You may not be smoking. But you know your life is as scattered as whatever and you know that you have not been walking in the ways of God you are saying Lord my pride is what has brought me to this trouble I need your help fast these two categories of people please if you are outside start running just before we come I'm going to count one to five it's not by force there is nothing tonight that is by force but I tell you you need Jesus you need Jesus Jesus is the answer start coming for the world today Run like there's fire on the mountain There's no other Jesus is the way Sing it run from any of the overflows join them those following us online there is still hope for you listen let me tell you the truth i don't care what has happened in your life the lord jesus will give you a new beginning it doesn't matter but you will only give those who can receive he said as many as received him you can reject him hallelujah those of you in front lift your right hand to heaven you are not reciting a poem this is not a memory verse. This is not a recitation. This is a simple guide to help you make a powerful decision. Say after me from the depth of your heart. And if you didn't come out here and you are part of them, those online, say it where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you to help me tonight. I have come before you sincerely asking you to intervene in my life I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today my sins are forgiven I have the life of God 
I move forward ever and backward never. The power of Satan, the power of sin, and the flesh is broken over my life. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Lord Jesus, there is no man who can be perfect by himself outside of you. You are our righteousness, our holiness, and our perfection. I pray for these ones who have come. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that a new life starts for you today. The grace to be responsible and to rise like an edifice is released upon you. In the name of Jesus, may your path be like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. In the name of Jesus Christ, every guilt, every condemnation over your life, I declare that it leaves your life now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you for this great decision. Please follow who is there. Follow someone waving his or her hands. Okay. Okay, lady, she's waving her hands. All of you this way. Just follow them. Please provide your details as required. And the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.